to be able to hold this panel um, as we're going through such a difficult time, but it's also a time of growth. And as we all know, with growth comes a little pain or a lot of pain. And we're here to really address those issues, the issues that are hurting us as black women in the Latin dance community, the issues that we had not spoken about before, and see if by bringing these issues to light, we can actually begin working on a resolution and healing. So my dancers and the panelists that are on with us today, this is a letter I sent to them. I said, first of all, not one of you has to speak or explain, say, or do anything, but stay black and beautiful. But the fact that you talk to me for hours and hours in our pre-interviews and are willing to speak on issues that at times may be sensitive is a testament to how committed you are to being part of what will hopefully be a seismic shift in our Afro-Latin dance community. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panelists. So um, our first panelist is Candace Joyner, Carmen, and our next panelist is Carmen Gwynn. Hi, Carmen, how are you? Good, Desiree Godsell, Erica Fignol, hey, Leah Patterson, hi, and Jesenia Celia. Okay, Hello. hi, and is Candace here yet? I'm not sure if she's been able to log in yet. Okay, and our person behind the scenes who I would not be able to do this with at all, and we pray that we don't have a humongous storm out in Florida and we get disconnected. Our man behind the scenes today is Rudy Lopez, El Tigre. Woo! A <laughs> local, honestly, would not be able to. We, you wouldn't be seeing us today. Um, I didn't learn that much doing remote teaching. Some of you may know I'm a special ed teacher. Okie dokie. So, Rudy, let's put everyone up on the panel. Let's put all our panelists up. I'm going to drop out. You may just hear my voice, and that's when Candace comes in. Just to explain to the viewers at home, you'll be able to see all six of us, all seven of us, but not all at the same time. So there'll be times where I'll be dropping out and all the panelists will stay in, or I will come in, and then Jesenia is my, my designated hitter. She'll come out. So I'll be swapping in and out with Jesenia. <laughs> well, okay? It's like a game yeah. show. What happened? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Everybody hi? I've got my square. Do you want to phone a friend? Or <laughs> is this Hollywood Squares? Okay. So I'll give everyone a, a quick, um, I'll say your names. I'll say a little bit about you. And you can go ahead and say a little bit about yourself as well. We'll start off with Miss Leah Patterson. And she is a transformation and wellness mentor. And she also has the Leah Patterson School of Dance. So welcome. We can snap. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It's oh, yeah, snap it up, snap it up. Um, yeah, it's super great to be here. Um, I've been dancing for goodness gracious, um, about twenty years. I started with Descarga Caribe uh, dance company out of Chicago, and actually that's where I started my professional career. And uh, I was a solo artist. And um, yeah, I'll tell you a lot more about my story. Oh, yeah, and yeah. We're gonna be doing the individual yeah. interview, so that's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. When you are not on the screen, you cannot be heard. <laughs> but I'm on the screen right now, right, Rudy? Yes? Okay. Oh, wow, we got upgraded. And everyone is on the screen. Woohoo! You see, I told Jesenia to pray to El Egua to open the pathways, and he went on the internet and opened the pathways of the internet. So awesome. Okay, next up is Carmen Gwynn from the St. Louis International Salsa Bachata Congress. Welcome, Hi. Carmen. How are you doing? Good to awesome. see everyone. Glad to be here. Um, yeah, I, I've been dancing for a little over 20 some odd years. So I've been at the game for a very long time. Um, I own Alma Del Ritmo Dance Company as well. And I've had that for about 13 years. And I um, am the executive producer of the St. Louis International Salsa Bachata Congress. And we're going on 11 years now. Amazing, amazing. That is fantastic. Kudos, big round of applause for Carmen. Gonna big it up every time. Miss Desiree Godsell, that's my girl. That's my home girl. Desiree has now has the academic network of dance. 
And tell us a little bit about that switch over from AND to Academic Network of Dance. You know, we're just moving into 2020. And um, yeah, so that's my new company with uh, my wonderful partner, Alex Morell. Um, we are, we pride ourselves on our pedagogy. And so we are presenting it to the world through Academic Network of Dance. I love it, love it, love it. Because we were going to talk about that education and the lack of education in the Latin dance world. Okay, Miss Erica Figno, who I want to borrow that outfit. And one of these days, Eddie's going to be on stage and it's going to be Rosie doing the funk dance. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready, Eddie. You watching? All right. Eddie, first, first how are you, Erica? Hello to everyone. I am so excited. Um, to be here with you all. I'm so looking forward to being educated and also to educate. Um, who, who is Erica Fignoli? I am a Haitian American from Brooklyn, New York. Um, been dancing since I, you know, since six years old. Um, I am I am a student, a dancer, and also a staff member of the Editors Latin Dance School. I was a former member of uh, Mambo Fatigues Incorporated, and I was also a team member of the um, New York International Salsa Congress at the time when it was under the leadership of Joko, rest in peace. Um, again, I'm just excited. I'm so looking forward to, you know, to reconnecting with some of you guys and also meeting some of you guys for the first time. So yeah, and that's it in a nutshell. Wonderful. Thank you, Erica. Thank you for being here. And Candice, hi, how are you? Candice, join us from Fuego y Yellow Dance Company. Hi. How are you today? Hi. Good. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, my name is Candice, and I'm a co-owner of Fuego Yellow Dance Company based out of Atlanta. Um, I was born in North Carolina, but I moved to Atlanta about maybe 20 or so years ago. So I've been here for a very long time. Um, I used to be a gymnast back in the day, and now I'm currently coaching that as well. Nice. Yeah. Really, I, I did see your picture doing a handstand on the railroad, like railroad tracks. Yes, so. Yes, I only got as far as round off back handspring. Hey, and and then when I would vault, everyone would tell me, Rosie, go over the horse, not through the horse. <laughs> that was my gymnastics career. I would just crash into the vault. Yeah. Okay, thank you ladies so much for being here. We're not gonna answer every question. Absolutely not. This has been, look how long Carmen's been in this industry, 20 years. Look how long Leah's been in this industry, 20 years plus, right? And Carmen, 20 years plus. Um, I'm rather, I'm in the middle somewhere, 12 years in, right? We're not going to answer every question, but what we want to do is bring up the issues that need further discussion. And maybe today we might find one or two answers. Who knows? Depends how wicked I get. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to start off and ladies uh, with, with um, Jesenia, and we're going to do a little just a little healing and a little <laughs> calling out to Elegua. And you tell us a little Wait, bit about Orisha you Elegua. You haven't present me yet, but I, I can present myself. Oh, <laughs> shoot. Oh, <laughs> I failed already. <laughs> no, you haven't. You haven't because okay. uh, putting these together is such a, an, a special treat and a, it's such a special you know, occasion for the dance community. And I'm so honored to be part of this and to join so many divas, you know, into this conversation. But yeah, I would say that always for me, it's kind of hard to define who am I, you know, this kind of hard always to put it together. But yeah, I do think of myself way more as a, as a teacher, um, as somebody that likes, uh, you know, I, I'd rather be behind the scenes because I am also a thinker. And I started like about 10 years ago, my work as a, about um, like a dance that know what I first researching about about the, the history of Latin dance, and specifically about the travel of Afro Cuban dancers into uh, the industries of dance. Um, so yeah, I pretty much a, a, a teacher and a, and a researcher that also performs. That's the way that I like to think of myself. And yeah, you asked me to uh, do some uh, Elewa opening, you know, and I was thinking in which uh, could be uh, like oh, a simple song. you forgot song. to say one thing, the mother oh, of triplet teenage boys. Yes. Uh, well, they are <laughs> well, artists adults. as well. They yeah. are, they're going to be uh, 20s uh, this oh, year. Oh, right, yeah. So, yes, 
Como uh, pasa so, el tiempo. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So, uh, but, um, well, I brought this Elewa song, and to be honest, I thought that because I do know this movement, I, I'm going to dance it just for a moment, so you can find out and tell me exactly what's the name of it, that all Salceros do this movement. What's the name of that? You do that, tan, 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 ah, yes no. Mollejo? Is that the Mollejo? I don't know, but I don't know. Everybody <laughs> do it always in his classes, but... Uh, so I want to bring uh, the Afro-Cuban version of it, no? that uh, it comes with this, uh, there are many songs, but I, w I bring a song, I brought a song for you guys today that basically is the opening of the road. So when we sing for Elewa, Elewa is uh, the first one of all the Orichas, this is uh, what we think of him of uh, like the policeman of the universe, you know, the one that allows good bad or bad luck, you know, to come to us. And in many uh, traditions in Latin America, there is an elegba, is a elegba in the Haitian uh, Voodoo, uh, is uh, in the in the uh, Candomblé tradition. So it's, the present is out there, uh, but here the song and the way that we ask for permission of Alegua is ambo, ambo is the word. So probably you want to mute your, your microphones because hopefully everybody in different places of the, in the world can sing with us uh, this song uh, that it says, Ago, go, ago, ago, go, la doye, ele de masanquio. And something important, uh, the words are not the most important thing. The most important thing is the connection from the heart Uh, we tend to uh, invite the audience, generally doesn't know all the songs, but uh, we are invite people to look at the mouth of the person singing, so you can kind of mumble in your own way, you know, so don't think in the American way that you need the perfection, or you need, no, 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 just join me with the spirit and with your heart, you know, to sing the song. So, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. A don go la do ye, ele wa de masanquio. A go go, a go. A don go la do ye, ele wa de masanquio. A go go, a go. A don go la do ye, ele wa de masanquio. A go go, a go. And then there is a turn around in the song uh, in that I say, A go, go, a go, la do ye, a go, go, a go, la do ye, a go, go, a go, a go, 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 a go, 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 So because everything is call and respond, so I am going to call first, and then you're going to repeat, and I brought my claves, right, Ooh. so we can sing with some music, uh-huh, so this is with a black claves, that is one, two, no, uh, uh, uh. I go, go, I go. I go, go, la do, ye, le, ye, le, ma, sa, si, yo. I go, go, I go. I go, go, la do, ye, le, ye, le, ma, sa, si, yo. I go, I go. I go, go, la do, ye, le, ye, le, ma, sa, si, yo. I go, go, I go. So I think with that, say, Elewa will be more than happy, and some of you already are familiar with what do we say to Elewa you know, to ask for his permission, for his blessing before doing anything, okay? So. Yes. Thank you, Jesenia. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ashe. Ashe. Thank you, Jesenia. To, oh, so, to open this, I want to go back to a, converse, um, to a 
you sorry my door's open so if you hear loud noises it's my door's open so i want to go back to a conversation that happened on we talk dance and i really owe a big debt of gratitude to we talk dance because they opened up first they opened up this platform for us and secondly because they took a big chance they did a chat because they felt it was necessary to talk about the black experience and we all learn as we go right the first car that Ford built didn't really run that well, right? And now um, it, you know, it's it, there. It's you know the cars that we have today. But if had, if he had given up the first time, we would never have gotten very far. So I definitely owe them a debt of gratitude, and that they took that chance and they saw what was needed, and from there came this, right? And so here we are. We each with each experience we, we grow. So one of the questions that had come up on that talk was name the black women in Latin dance. And as some of you know, I put that post up on my Facebook page because I didn't know either. I was like, Desi, Terry and Cecile, same names. So what surprised me most was the responses that I got in my messages. Rosie, is this dancer black? I was like, I don't know. That's my friend. We don't. We never talked about. It. Is this dancer black? Can I post this dancer? Oh my gosh! I don't want. Like, and the tone was more like they didn't want to upset anyone. And after a while, I was just like, Hey, just bet on black. That's it. Just bet on black. You can't go wrong. You know. At the end of the day, we have to get away from this mentality that saying someone is black is somehow this negative thing. Right? We're not taught that, but yet there it is, still in our subconscious, right? From the novelas, when they, oh my God, what was the novela, the lady's big secret? That her mother was black, and now the rich man won't marry her, right? So it's still in, in there, in that subconscious. So where I put a post and people are afraid that saying XYZ dancer might be black would insult them. So I want to open the discussion just by saying, so what is black? You can take a pass. <laughs> you can give it your best shot. You can Wikipedia it. I don't care. <laughs> but what is black? And I'm going to start with Jesenia Selyer. Ah, mute, unmute. Um, uh -huh. Well, I, I do, it's like, it's very easy to, to, to react like we have a prejudice about this, but the reality is that uh, the Latin dance community is a very transnational community. Uh, so uh, we have a colliding ideas about, about blackness, you know, inside the dance, the dance community. And I think, uh, you know, in the pen of, uh, where exactly every dancer comes from, you know, there is also like a certain history, you know, about, about blackness. So I would say that on top of the more extendedly no understanding, you know, like, like the American perspective that one drop of, of black blood, you know, make you black, you know, certainly uh, in the in the Latin American uh, community, and there is a lot of Latin American people present in the dance community, they have different perspectives about blackness, you know. So uh, if you ask uh, people from Cuba, uh, people from, from Colombia, people from other places, um, maybe this notion that we have in the, in the United States do not apply for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I know people that are darker than me in Cuba that they, they will be offended, you know, if you say they are black, you know, because they are not into the American. So I do think, like, there is a, there are many reasons behind uh, why this is conflicted and why this is a conflict for many other people. And I think it's important to bring clarity about that, you no? Know? Because in the same way, I do think this is, a, this is a Latin dance. And as a Latin dance, we import all the prejudice that we have in Latin America. And I would say like colorism, that like, that, you know, that kind of classifies people or make it more acceptable or more pretty, you know, when they're closer to, to, white, to whiteness. No, See. if they are like fair skin, you know, they, it's like all these uh, readings, I, I think, are very, really ingrained in, mm -hmm. the, in the history of Latin dancers because it's part of the history of Latin America. That's my perspective. So what I found is that in speaking with people and, and, and dialoguing with people, some people don't know what the one drop rule is. 
it's just kind of it they're living it and they don't even know what the one drop rule is they don't know about what you know that this was a this was legal actually a legal designation where if you were one sixteenth black you had to claim yourself as black even if you were far removed from it and you're not not even being raised in a black family or with the black culture right so that law was done away with but yet the the traces of it remain. So I, I would like to now go over to Leah. And Leah, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Um, can you all hear me okay? Because I changed my mic to try to oh, have uh, it be a yes. little bit uh, clearer. Excellent. Um, well, you know, my perspective is as an African American black woman that is of slave African descent. So I don't know my family's heritage in Africa. So you know, my ancestors are the slaves that were here. So it's a very different um, experience of blackness um, because I grew up, especially I went to an HBCU, I went to Howard University, I always gotta represent for the bisons. Um, mm -hmm. And so for me, my blackness is an aspect of, of excellence. It's an aspect of, of of showing up and always showing up as your best self because you're not only representing yourself, but you're representing the, the rest of your race that wasn't able to get where you were able to get to. So um, that definitely shaped my um, perspective coming into the Latin dance world um, because there were certain things that were a part of my um, molding and my shaping that when um, I was met upon it coming into the Latin dance world, it was a stark, um, it was just like hitting a wall in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, it, and it, it definitely caused me to have to do a lot of introspection and self-reflection as to what does blackness mean in these other spaces as well. So not mm -hmm. just as an African-American person in my experience as black, but what does it mean? Um, because I, I became aware of Afro-Latin blackness because of my experience in the dance community and, um, mm -hmm. and even understanding my own connection to the music that came as that became more of something that people talked about in the dance community. So, you mm -hmm. know, my, my perspective is a little bit different. Cause there's the, there's the aesthetic, yeah, I could right? talk, but I, I could, I could like. Look. Oh, who's there? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, sorry. I don't want to make sure I don't cut anyone off. Okay, the, right, the, the, there's the aesthetic no, of I'm how we look and being, right okay, sorry, and, and being recognizably black, right? And then there is the, mm -hmm. you're a black woman and I'm a black woman, but yet our cultural, diff we are very, culturally we're very different, right? Our upbringing is different. So trying to be, being a black United Statesian woman, right? Where we look the yeah. same, but yet our cultures are so different. And how do we mesh that within the Afro-Latin dance community, right? Exactly. And finding yes. what's more similar. I'll leave this open if anybody else wants to jump in or jump in later on. Just. Um, well, hi. Hi. So, <laughs> I just want to say, kind of piggybacking off of everybody, um, your blackness, what are we referring to? Kind of like what you just said, Rosie, what are we referring to in general? Because, yes, we all have different backgrounds. There are plenty of black people around the world in different countries who, yes, they refer to themselves as, oh, I'm French or, oh, I live here, so this is me. But are we talking about the color of our skin? Are we talking about our hair texture? What makes you black? Yes, I am black and I live here in America. I was born in America, so United States in, is that as you called it? Um, <laughs> that's what I am, but there's so many different black faces that can be represented from many different cultures and many different places. Are you talking about, okay, we're black from our skin and our hair and what, you know, where we are, or are we just saying we're black because I'm here in America, I'm black, my ancestors are from here, I'm black, or, you know, vice versa. So we have to think, we have to open up that question to what are we specifically referring to? Yeah, and, and it's also our experiences. I was talking with Carmen, and I really hope I don't insult anyone out there and, in the internet world. And so I said, Carmen, where are you from? Because her name Carmen and I saw Gwen and we had not met. And I'm already making all these pre, pre, pre assumptions, right? Well, Carmen, my cousin's name is Carmen. So she must be Spanish. Maybe she's Panamanian. 
maybe maybe panamanian yeah and then gwen mm, that could some kind of english and i know a lot of jamaicans went to panama to build a canal i'm already doing all of this right and carmen was when we talked she was just like girl <laughs> and then i was like gwen looks like guyana so maybe she's from guyana <laughs> and then carmen said no 100 percent american so i uh, carmen if you'd like to add something to about perception yeah, it, it, it's so funny that you bring that up because um, when I first started in in the scene, you know, and people actually saw that I could dance, I would. There's no way that I could be just an uh, American, a Black American. Oh, you 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 must be from Cuba. Oh, you must be Panamanian. Oh, you 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 know, it it never was just. Oh, you you're American. Oh, great, you could dance. So it it always it you couldn't have that aspect of Black in there because or, or american black because mm -hmm. to know that culture know the no no parts of the culture um so yeah yeah i uh, yes I go ahead Desi. go I jump in that i echo that so much that um i'm born and raised in houston texas um and i i am a mixed heritage but uh i grew up as and it a lot of it how i just was um how I always thought about my blackness is how other people saw me. And in Texas, they saw me as a black woman. Uh, and especially in the uh, the Latin dance world, because I my parents aren't immigrants or um, I don't have like a direct link to another country. Uh, I'm just the American black girl in mm. a lot of other spaces. So I think that's how, and I'm, look, I'm learning every day is a new day. I'm like, ooh. Um, but yeah, my blackness has been how others have perceived me. But I was gonna say, Ru uh, Rosie on that chat, which is, which was interesting too, was a lot of people were like, "Wait, she's not black, right?" Oh, I didn't even see that yeah. happen. I saw that. Oh, uh, wow. in the chats, you know. So yeah. I think it's just interesting now, you know. Uh, they are the flip side of that. Wow, and we'll talk more. We'll definitely talk more when we do our one-on-ones. And Erica, my yeah. darling. <laughs> um, man, where, where do I start? I would say it'll start from where I come from. You know, for people who don't know, you know, Haiti, you know, the history of Haiti, um, the impact and the influence that Haiti has, you know, in the Latin, you know, in the Latin community, or do, do we know that Haiti is actually a Latin American? <laughs> You know, it's part of Latin America. Um, and, you know, I come from a time where, you know, especially if you're Haitian from New York, Brooklyn, and anyone who's in Brooklyn, Flatbush in particular, there was an era where you were afraid to tell people that you're Haitian. Why? Because you didn't want to be called a Haitian booty scratcher. You didn't want to get bullied. You didn't want to get, like, people would tell people, like, if I'm Haitian, no, I'm from Jamaica. No, I'm from Trinidad. No, I'm Dominican. No, I'm here. I'm there. Because, you know, this is what we had to go through. People looked at us a certain way. So being little, you know, especially coming from a very historical family, I had to deal with that. And then all these mixed messages, because then now, Erica, you don't look Haitian. Till this day, people mm -hmm. still ask so I say, well, what does a Haitian person look like? You know what I mean? And to me, like, it was instilled like, in my house, my family. When I think of Black, proud, unique, soul. You know what I mean? Which not everybody has. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it just, just, you know, like, fight. We're fighters. You know, we need to show people who we are. So on top of, you know, what everyone, um, you know, added, I just want to put that, you know, as well. And just embracing your history, which is, you know, I'll get more into that, you know, later. So that's what, that's what I would add. Yes, absolutely. And because I forgot to say I'm Colombian um, and Jesenia, you have one, one little bit more to add, Jesenia? You're mute. I, I, yeah, I wanted to, to add uh, just after after Erica that uh, because we have uh, several conversations already about the blackness of salsa, but I do uh, think it's a, such an amazing thing that we among the women that we have all together here we have an Afro, Afro Haitian African American and Haitian woman because I do think 
uh, that part of the, the of that long story and I don't know configuration of of prejudice, you know, that we bring from Latin America, and this is part of, of uh, from the United States, uh, is the unfairness and the prejudice and the stigma about Haiti. It's like I would think uh, it's like uh, if we like in my perspective as a as a researcher of Latin dances. Uh, without Haiti, we would never, would never have something like Bomba in, in Puerto Rico. It's like Haiti is, is a country that actually emits so much in terms of culture through many other places in the Caribbean. I cannot think of uh, bachata or merengue in Dominican Republic either without uh, the Haitian influence. Uh, so I really would love to see in the future, Erica, you bring more, way more of uh, the Haitian dancers, because I think uh, 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 Haiti is one of the most important countries in this world. Uh, it's a very important country for the history of Black people, of the African diaspora people, because I think part of what we have conveyed here is the transnational aspect of Blackness. We are part of a diaspora. You know, and blackness has many faces, many different histories, many, but everybody, every black person in this world owns so much to Haiti, you know, because Haiti was the first colony, you know, that rebelled and did a revolution. You know, there's like three important revolutions in the world history is the French, the American, and the Haitian. <laughs> so take note on that and find information about the about, about the Haitian Revolution because you will understand a lot about blackness and about the, and a lot about the, the history of prejudice in the Western culture about blackness. Just reading and learning about the history of Haiti. Yes, amazing. And Erica does a lot of. Uh, I know you dance with Frank also. And you represented the Afro Caribbean culture, and I saw you on the stages at the New York Salsa Congress and at different events. And I was always like, "Oh, if only I had more cartilage in my knees, I would jump up there." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead into our individual chats. So I'm gonna start with Leah. Rusty, ladies, to take a little break, but don't go too far, okay? And after that, we'll be Carmen. Okay. Hi, Leah. Yay, Rosie. <laughs> oh my God, talk about six degrees, like one degree of separation, which is like say cool McMiller. I know. <laughs> yes. I, know. I love that we yeah. have that connection. One, yeah. So Leah, just go ahead and just, you know, what was it like to be the first black? And I'm gonna say black United Statesian because yeah. a friend told me, why don't I have a country? She says, I said, okay, we, we black United States here. I like that. I, like <laughs> I love that. it too. It I said, if I can say Czechoslovakian, I can say United States here. No problem. So <laughs> what was so how was it for you being the first black United States here, Afro Latin dancer, and then to become a solo artist? So tell us about that. So <laughs> um man, it was a journey. I mean, uh Luckily, I've prepared to have this conversation because if you had asked me that just off the top, it would be a ramble of um, just random conversation. But um, so I, I, I initially started with Descaiga Caribe and Descaiga Caribe was, you know, Seiku's dance company in Chicago. That's where I started my professional dance career. And um, really me becoming a soloist was really out of the lack of other opportunities for me and not for lack of my effort, not for lack of me trying to pursue these other opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, back then when I came into the dance scene, I, I loved to dance. I had this connection with the music that I could not explain, but of course we understand it now, but mm -hmm. I loved it so much. And when I, um, when I started dancing in DC, uh, so I started, <laughs> So this is relevant to the story. I started dancing in DC and um, I learned to dance actually from Trinidadians at an after school, not after school, uh, a summer program at Cornell in my sophomore year of college. Okay. And, um, but when I went back to Howard, nobody was trying to like dance also with me. They were like, that's what, you know, people do. Like, yeah, so when I graduated, I was like, I'm gonna go find out where they dance also. 
that's what I'm gonna do. So I did. And luckily I like linked up with some great salsa dancers, which I'm sure I'll talk about them a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, so when I moved to back home in Chicago, started dancing with um, Seiku, really, really fortunate to like connect with that group. But because I love to dance so much, I wanted to be able to dance. And yeah. I tried to find, a, you know, and, and this we'll get into, we'll get into a little bit later, but, um, my opportunities to do solo work and to do couples work were stifled in that mm -hmm. in that scene. And I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried to dance with this person and that person. I traveled, I traveled to dance with people that I met, you know, at congresses. And I would take my happy tail, you know, to the places where they live to try to, you know, connect with them and dance with them. Yes. And look at my resume, you can see all the people that I've danced so, with. And so what was happening when you were trying to connect with these dancers? So this is where we get into the difficult aspects of the story. Um, mm. You know, I I have always been a very um, a very make it happen kind of person, and so yeah. you know, it, in hindsight, I realized that like these opportunities were not being given to me. It wasn't that you know I wasn't good enough. It wasn't that I wasn't dedicated enough. It wasn't any of that. It was that just someone decided that they, they weren't going to choose me. And when I looked at the reasons mm -hmm. why they weren't going to choose me, it had a lot to do with things that I had no control over. Like yeah. my hair doesn't shake around. So I've, I've had natural hair since anyone has known me in the salsa, the salsa dance. Mm -hmm. I've wearing my hair naturally in 1995. Um, and so, you know, it was like, all right, but you know, but because of, so this talks about a little bit about like the black woman's and the black person's experience when you're someone yeah. who has been, you know, groomed for excellence, you don't make excuses for yourself. You start, you just start mm -hmm. problem solving. You start being like, okay, well, this is not happening. All right, so let me do this. This is not happening. Okay, let me do this. And yeah. so I became a solo artist because nobody, because I couldn't find a partner. You could have, yeah. I a solo artist and because I wanted to yeah. still dance. You know, yes. and it was like, okay, well, if I'm going to still be in this, in this world, how am I going to still be in this world? Well, I'm going to mm -hmm. have to be in this world and do my own thing because at that point, and then I'll let you ask the question, <laughs> because mm -hmm. at that point, I had already been vetted because I'd already been on stage as, yes. a, as a performer with the Sky Caribe, a team that was traveling the world and getting mm -hmm. mad accolades. I was already, I was a, I was one of the principal dancers on that dance team. So I'd already been vetted. So it was like, well, what is the problem? Why can I not mm. find a partner? Why can I not, you know, like, why can I not do what I want to do? I want to dance. Mm. I want to perform. I have a I question for you. Did you, at that time, because now we know the answer. Well, we're getting closer yeah. to the answer. We're going to talk about that too. Yeah. But yeah. back then, did you know the, the reason why? Did, did you think it had to do with your ability at any point? Or... I Back then, I thought mostly that it had to, I thought it was more sexism than anything. And uh -huh. just that, like, I was, you know, like, 20-something-year-old me was super opinionated. And, mm. and because I came into this dance world, because I love to dance, yes. you had to come correct on the dance floor with me. And <laughs> what yes. that meant was that, like, if you were going to try to get me to do, like, you know, turn patterns through parts of the music that I wanted to do. Shine yeah. I just wanted yeah. to do that with you. No, I relate because I did a lot of, I danced with the West African dance company. And when I came into salsa and I danced hip hop and I did my own Colombian salsa, you know, I don't know. Did you ever take West African dance? I did just a little okay. bit. You, could, you, right. you can't so, so, You know, <laughs> in West African dance, you don't count. Yeah. The break comes. Mm -hmm. -ba 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 -ba, and you got to go to the next step. So yes. I would be dancing with someone and I would hear what I felt was the break in the salsa song and stop midterm pattern. <laughs> <It's> like, <Yeah. laughs> it, but, right? but let them go and close my eyes and do my thing. So yes. I took ownership in the part where I was a little difficult to dance with. And, and yeah. that's what you're saying, right? You take ownership on your part, but then there was I, something that was beyond your control. Yeah, exactly. And that reality didn't hit me until maybe about, you know, may, maybe about five years into like my dance career, mm -hmm. maybe not that long. It's hard, you know, it's been so long that the, the years kind of mushed together. But um, when I, so I had an experience and I'm going to try not to name names, but I had an experience and, um, and it was one of many experiences. And I realized that somebody didn't want me on stage for a special project 
because my hair didn't do what the other girl's hair did. Oh boy. You okay. know, and this yeah. person was another black man. And I was like, what? Really? You're just like, what did they want you to do with your hair? I mean, like, you don't have to say the person, but what did they want? Well, they wanted long hair that could whip okay. around. And so this okay. was part of that whole sexism thing because I was all, especially back then, I was like, I am a dancer. I'm not a prop. I'm not a sexy mm. thing to look at. Like, you know, my sexiness just happens to be a byproduct of my dancing, but I'm a dancer. Yes. So they wanted like this kind of sexy aesthetic. And so I really had to struggle with that. So I was like, well, dang, my hair doesn't do that. But dang, yeah. does that mean that I don't get to like, because I'm talented. I'm clearly talented because mm -hmm. I'm on the team and I'm at this at, at this event, you know, so clearly I'm talented. So how is that? So that was very difficult to deal yes. with, you know. Absolutely. Well, look, yeah, I, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, mean, I, can't, yeah. I can't get my hair to shake too much, you know. Well, it was, it, I mean, it got to the point where. Uh, there's a club called Cache here for the longest time, and I'm gonna bring in Desiree. So I hope Desiree is is there. I'm bringing in Desiree in in a few minutes. Yeah. And you know, it got to the point where I wouldn't go out if I didn't have a fake ponytail on, with 500 mm -hmm. pins, because when I went out like this, I didn't get asked out to dance. But when I did the ponytail and the lipstick and the hair, then I was dancing all night, and I, I knew that I I know the difference. Mm -hmm. I yeah. felt oh. it. I, I saw mm -hmm. it. You know, I got the, the looks. But I want I want to tell you one ask one more thing of you. And mm -hmm. did you kind of go away from the dance scene for a little bit? And you're coming back in, or tell me where, where oh. what happened and then where you're at now. Okay, so so this is going to be heavy and it's okay. So, um, so actually, like I've, I've said often, that 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 salsa saved my life just as as much as it almost took my life. So I I mm -hmm. attempted suicide around salsa, dealing with salsa and dealing with like wow. the frustrations in and and just like the like because I mean like I was that dedicated. And so after that suicide attempt and after like you know kind of coming back from that. I really had to, and, and not many people know, more people know now because I've shared more of that story, but at that time, people, of course, obviously didn't know. Yeah. And this was around two, 2009. This was like after I had moved a thousand times for my dance career. You know, I'm a chemical engineer. Like, I mean, I, I had oh. other opportunities to do things, yes. but because yes. I loved dance so much, I had made tons of sacrifices for it. And so finally I decided, you know, I can't keep chasing these dance dreams anymore. So I moved back home is where my mom is. My mom is in, um, is in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. And so I moved back home and, um, and, I, and I had to reevaluate what dance, where, what place dance had in my life. And yes. so that's why I stopped pursuing actively like a solo career and actively pursuing um, a, a, a partnership. Um, and now I teach. And now I teach. So I teach here in Little Rock. I have my, you know, I've, I've done some really cool collaborations with some cool friends. And, and I, so I get on stage every now and then. I still love it because I love to perform. And, yes. and now I get a lot of joy out of teaching. So it's kind of shifted for me in these past couple of years. And I'm 43 now, too. So things are different when we're a little bit older. <laughs> yes. But I know the angst because I was dancing. And in my 20s, I was a professional dancer. And that was my sustenance. And if I didn't get that gig, the, and, and it was my whole life. It was, yeah. my, whole it was life. my whole life. But understand yeah. where you get driven to that brink where you're like, you're not getting that gig. You're not getting this other gig. Or yeah. um, can't if you don't have the emotional like strength and confidence to like and support, yeah, and support, you know, to see yourself through these things so they don't become personal hits to you, it's really yeah. difficult. Oh. Yeah, I'd like to bring in the panel now and see. Um, I know Justenia put something in the comments okay. section. When we talk about hair, we got to talk about Desiree Godso because she's she. See, I didn't know you, Leah. So Desi's the one that finally helped me burn all my ponytail with just like I said, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Who is this no, woman, Desiree, no, out there dancing with natural I hair? I will not be contained. <laughs> and she was it. And I was like, bye-bye, ponytail. <laughs> I love it. I'm glad you did that, Desiree. I'm glad you repeated yeah. that. Listen, and yeah. the, but to that, Rosie, them bobby pins is flying everywhere. It's like, take that thing out. 
And you know you was whipping the head better with the ponytail out. Anyway. Listen, I had to fly off in a social, but we won't even go there. But uh, so Desiree, is it, I just saw that connection when I first told Leah about you. And then she was, and I said, you know, you're, you were my, you're the one that gave me permission to do, wear my hair like this. And she was like, I've been doing that 20 years ago. I said, yeah. I didn't know you, Leah. So, yeah. I mean, I would like, I, the hair discussion was going to be later, but let's go for it now. Uh, I mean, the, yes, Senya, I, I was uh, reading your question. Um, yes. That black aesthetics are less welcome in the, the dancing. And, um, you know, the first thing we think of is hair for a lot of people. But I also think for me, it's been like body. You know, just like my physical appearance just might, for some, might be like too strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm five eight and I'm big boned. Okay, so <laughs> exactly, Erica. I know you don't know. So my my whole physical stature it could, I guess, for some they call it intimidating, or for some it might just be a, a turn off. So I mean, it's all like such a circle because then that's like intimidating people not to dance with me. That's intimidating people not to partner with me. You know, um, that's intimidating, or that it's just like. There's so many things that maybe I'm not right for the flyer or you only want that back shot for the flyer. Like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? There, there's so have many. Have, have you ever had someone tell you specifically to do your hair a certain way or could oh, you not do your first hair all, like that? First of all, I had a promoter. Um, Alex was messaging him and they were like, oh, okay, here's, send us the promo uh, pictures. Boom, promo pictures. He was like, the promoter came back like, no, no, no. Um, I want Desiree. So make sure that you're sending me the photo of Desiree. And he's like, no, that is Desiree. He's like, no, no, no. Because I guess they sent a picture of me with my natural hair. Okay. He's like, no, no, no. Make sure you get the picture of Desiree with the long braids. You know, you went, actually it wasn't the braids. I had a, a, a sew in at the time. He's like, no, no, I want the sew in. And he's like, that girl, that girl, like it's not me. And I was like, wait, oh. so crazy. I've had a lot of that people asking for, for more images that are, um, yeah, of just not me and my natural aesthetic, you know? Yes. Um, and <laughs> go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Desi. I'm sorry. No, no. And I was going to say, like, uh, the issue behind the hair is like what I would have to do. No one's considering me. It's just like, I have to fit in with everybody else on the team and there's no exceptions. And it's kind of like this homogenous look they're going for, which I'm not a part of. So maybe I get left out of the yeah. picture. Oh, yes. You know, but Desi, I have a, you know what? I have to say something before I, 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 sh I send it to Candace. When I first spoke to Candace, she's like, you know, Rosie, I'm so quiet. I don't even know if I have something to say. And now she's in the comment section, exclamation points. I have something to say. Yes. <laughs> Let it, Candace, Let it Candace. Finding your voice, finding your voice. Yes. Okay. No. Thanks, Candace. So I am extremely quiet. I'm not a talker at all. You can ask anybody in my life. <laughs> uh, but no, I do have a comment on like the hair and the body because that's been one of my big issues in general. I remember when I first started dancing and I joined a company, the hair had to be pulled back, kind of like Erica's right now, in a ponytail and like a little bun. And before I was like transitioning into natural, didn't really know what was going on. And so I'm sitting here with a whole bottle of gel trying to get my hair to go down into this bun and it was already short, so it wasn't really working. So then I would try sew-ins and then I would have some of my hair out, but then the sew-ins and so I just looked so crazy. I can't believe nobody told me before because I look back on pictures with the ponytail and then my natural hair kind of hanging out and I'm just like, what is going on? And so I've struggled so much, especially with dancing with the hair just alone, just trying to figure out what am I going to do for social dancing? Like, okay, I'm going to straighten my hair because I want my hair to fling. I think my face looks prettier with my hair straight because that's just the image that has been, you know, portrayed in my life through the past. Like, oh, you look prettier with straight hair. So I want my hair straight. Oh, that's damaging your hair. Now your hair is breaking mm -hmm. off. What am I going to do? So eventually, you know, when I found natural, it became so freeing because then I didn't have to worry about 
Oh, are my, is my sewing showing? Is my braids here? Is my natural hair getting sweated out? So now it's curly with my other hair straight. I don't have to use the whole bottle of gel to try to get my hair to slick down when it's just going to come up when somebody does a hair comb and then they mess up my hair. And then I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> and so it's just being. And, and, when you're the, yeah. and when you're the only girl on the team that has a certain texture hair, exactly. right? It's yes. like. If everybody, if all of us here were natural and had, okay, we want to do the look I have, and we had a girl with super straight hair, boy, yep. we, she, she wouldn't know what to do with it. She put perm rollers or it. But exactly. it's opposite for us because we're usually the minority on a team, and we don't have that other sister to turn to to say, oh my God, okay, we can do the bun, but let's let. What are your tricks? We don't even have that support a lot of times. Exactly. And I remember one of my first performances, they wanted half up, half down with the little bump. So I literally had to go to my hairstylist and get paid a hundred and some dollars to get her to do my hair just so I could do that one show like that. Mm. But backing off from the hair, you know, body was another image that I've struggled with over the past too. And I know like I might get some stuff for this, but my body has been an issue for me because as if you look at my upper body from my chest up, I feel like, you know, it looks pretty good. I look fit. My arms are toned, whatever. You look at me from my hips down, my legs are okay, but I've always had an issue with my midsection. My stomach has always poked out. I've always had a pot belly and it's always been an issue for me. And then, you know, starting off dancing, I felt like in the beginning, looking at other people, oh, I think my body rolls would look better if I was skinnier. Oh, I think my hips would look better if I was, you know, doing this. And so you see people and also I'm going to circle around this later, but like representation of everything, not just your skin, but body. See girls that were bigger that can actually still move because, you know, sometimes you see bigger people, but they may not be able to dance as well as the skinny ones. And so if you only have those two comparisons to look at, you think, oh, I need to be in this kind of shape to even get my body to move yes. in a certain type of way. Absolutely. And we're going to be talking about that too, right? And when our aesthetic is so closely tied into our race, right? It becomes personal. It becomes about us. Uh, so I wanted to go to Erica because we, you and I had an interesting conversation because your experience has been a little different right. than with so, Eddie. Just to, as far as, I mean, even before I go there, it, it mm -hmm. just made me think about, I remember it's a little different, but it's just the, the concept I, you know, I think is the same. And I remember I used to watch the Olympics a lot. I would watch the gymnast team. I would watch the U.S. You know the the U.S.A. team, and I noticed they have this look. All of them have the bun with the split in the middle, all slicked down. The bun has to look exactly, you know, has a way that it's supposed to look. And I looked at all the girls, blonde hair. I'm like, okay. Then after that, the next team comes up, and I'm all about, you know, uniform. You want to look together, right? Then after that, I would see the next team, Russia. Same thing. No black women, the same, the same slick down the bun. Then I would see the Ukrainian team. So guess what? I used to look at that and already, even if I wanted to, 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 you know, to be that gymnast, just by looking at the way how I see all of them, I just totally said to myself, all right, Erica, you're not cut for this. You don't fit that criteria because this is the perception. This is how you're supposed to look mm -hmm. in order to join that team. And who's to say, I could have probably been in the World Guinness Book of Records. I could have probably been a gold medalist had I not let that, seeing that. And then now I just put that in my mind mm -hmm. that this is how I'm supposed to look. But I'm like, okay, I know that's not, that's not me. I don't look like that. You mm -hmm. know, and I don't know if it, you know, sometimes if you guys feel that way as well. And then because of the image, whatever the image is supposed to be, right? Now, you're supposed to have that hair in a bun. Desiree, you come into my event. Your hair, you have your hair out. I remember when Desi used to have that hair that we always used to admire. You know what I mean? I, I don't care if you have the talent. I don't care if you have this. I don't care if you have that. You're not going on my stage with that hair. Your hair needs to be on that bun. You need to be wearing your hair like this because, again, this is that perception. This is that look that you're supposed to have in that particular genre that you're dancing. And that's how I used to see it. I mean, I don't know. What do you guys, I mean, what do you guys think? 
Like, I think, you know, well, I I'm going to go to... So Erica, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Carmen because actually it's okay. time for Carmen's interview. And I know she has a lot to say as a director of dance companies and what kind of look are we going for. So ladies, take a break. I'm going to interview Carmen for a little bit, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so Miss Carmen, St. Oh. Louis, meet me in St. Louis. <laughs> so we're, we, we're leaving with a heavy topic. Hair. Yeah. <laughs> well... Yeah, that is a heavy topic, but even even adding to that a little bit, I was um, going to add to that, is not only the hair and the body, but for some young ladies, African-American ladies, it was the darker-skinned African-American women. Okay. I, I fit that, 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 you know, that, that I fit it. <laughs> um, but you have to remember that we're talking 20 years ago, there weren't hardly any African-American females on the scene any there, Leah was the only one that was presented on stage. So kind of like how Desiree was saying, you know, I'm 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 five seven and I'm not a skinny girl. I'm not, you know, and at that time I wasn't wasn't um wasn't heavier, but I, I wasn't a skinny girl. Um, but not only that, I was a dark skinned girl. So coming onto the scene as a social dancer and um standing at the sidelines and asking to dance, no one really wanted to dance with me. And even after they saw that I could dance and after they saw that I had skill and I'm trained under this person, they still did not want to. I got the look up and down and walked away or my feet hurt. But then mm -hmm. someone who pencil skinny and blonde hair who couldn't dance at all got asked to dance. Yes. Those, those, that, those are some of the other things that, yeah. that, that portrayed. So, so I, I ask you, with those experiences in mind, now as the owner and director, of the St. Louis International Salsa Bachata Festival. Do you look at your events differently? Does that give you a different perspective of your events so far as who you hire and what 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 mechanisms are you setting in place for the people that come to enjoy it so that you know everyone gets to dance? So let me explain why I started the Congress. Um, I first wanted something here in St. Louis because I wanted I wanted something great here. It wasn't seen here or anything like that. But then again, we didn't see African American females on stage. Like I said, the only one we saw was Leah, and I remember seeing Leah on stage. And I'm like, man, I can do that. I can I could do that. Just like her, I asked several people. If I named some of the people <laughs> that I asked, you would know. But I. Knew off, it was because of the way I looked that that wasn't what they wanted. Okay, so from there on, I decided to. Well, if I can't get a partner and I can't dance, I they really are not allowing or we're not being seen on stage. I decided to do an all ladies group, and it was four black females, and actually mm -hmm. one of them was um, Latina. But I picked. I said black. I did it because I wanted people to see at that time that it didn't matter if you didn't, if we didn't speak, mm -hmm. didn't know that one of us was Latina, we all looked the same. Exactly. We were the first black group, female women group on stage. And I pushed for that. I pushed for that in New York. I, I befriended Choco because I knew I wanted to be on that stage. Yes. You know? But we, it, it didn't happen. It didn't happen all the time. So we were, we were there a couple of times. We were there in Chicago a couple of times. And I said, this isn't right. So I'm gonna have to start something if I'm going to stay in this game, if I'm going to stay in this in this industry, I'm, yes. gonna stay, I'm on my own. So that's how this Congress started, because I understand what it feels like to be sidelined. I understand what it feels like to be left out. I understand what it feels like to be um, noted out because you look a certain way. And it, with my Congress, that wasn't going to happen. So mm -hmm. with, with talent, they were going to be on the stage. Yes. And what are, about the women that come to the events? and aren't asked to dance? Like, do you have designated dancers or people that can maybe get a pass or for that night? And maybe they'll have a little star that says, you know, St. Louis, and they go out and they ask women to dance? Let me tell you something about St. Louis. Um, like I said, mm -hmm. we're into our 11th year, but because of the atmosphere that, that, that my team and I created, uh -huh. people that are there that feel welcome. Mm -hmm. That, that was the total purpose of me doing that because I understood what it feels like as a black female, a black African American. Yes. So I'm at, purposely the culture and the and the atmosphere that we've created does not 
um, does allow everyone to come and feel welcome. Um, oh. Out of the, you know, we just finished 10 years, I said in October and every, every year I feel people are, I have people tell me how much they enjoyed being there. Not yeah. one has, has left my Congress and not felt like they um, mm -hmm. had left out or missed, misappropriated. So, so what would you say to directors of other festivals or Congresses that aren't even aware that when black women go to these events, to quote somebody on a Facebook page, it said, we feel like we're the bottom of the totem pole, especially if you're a little bit thicker, but especially if you're darker and you know you wind up going home with your clothes still dry mm -hmm. <laughs> and your shoes there, brand new. There's, there's two things that I want to um, say. Mm -hmm. Number one, you know, to my ladies, and I and I understand, and I, and I always refer back to Leah because we, we kind of went through this at the same time, we went different kind of different paths, but went through it the mm -hmm. same. Time. Um, I was determined that I was going to do this dance for Carmen Gwen. I wasn't going to let anyone tell me I couldn't be there. I wasn't going to let anyone tell me that um, I wasn't supposed to be there. Especially when I started studying the roots of salsa, you definitely wasn't going to tell me. How to there. Okay, yeah. so I, I encourage um, first of all anybody that's dancing to 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 figure out your why why you're dancing because if you don't figure out the why, then you're going to be upset every time. Um, mm -hmm. and, and with other promoters from a promoter pers perspective. Um, and directors, yes. And directors, um, you know, we're in a we're in a changing time. It should have changed a long time ago, but we're in a changing time now. We have we have people that look different, and people um, people are it's 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 more people getting involved in the scene. So the scene is even changing, whether you realize it or not. And it's time to open up. Mm -hmm. It's past time to open up. And how do they open up? So far as the social, because the stage is something different and we're gonna address that a little later, mm -hmm. but the social aspect of it, where I feel like I'm not gonna be sitting there in the corner by myself mm -hmm. because I'm gonna be looked over. Yeah, um, the, the one thing that I that I don't like, but it, it, it may be necessary, we don't we don't use it or I don't use it at, at, at mm -hmm. the same are the taxi. Uh, taxi dancers, yeah. Taxi dancers, um, and and that that's that's a very good start. I mean, I'm seeing that in over the past uh, couple of years that that that's being used. But then, even in that case, you know that they can be choosy and choosy on who they want to be with too, or who they want to dance with. Um, not if they want that free pass. <laughs> not if they want that free pass, but you know, it, but, but not just here, kidding, but you know, right? But here we go again. We still have we still have black women feeling sidelined. Yeah, but it won't be just black women, you know. It'll be there are other women also that feel that way. We we feel it a lot, but so it's just yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I yeah. think the, the conversation that we're having is about black, mm -hmm. women. and so yeah. I know for I know for a fact that black women are that feel sidelined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course everyone, but but I know our conversation is that's what. Yes, we're definitely, definitely. So you know, it 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 um, you know, it it just it. It just has to be be where we we're opening up and people starting to see that this is what this is now, and that yeah. we're gonna we're gonna be there, that people are gonna be there. And so, oh, somebody gonna... wants to know what a taxi dancer is. Oh, oh, a taxi dancer is is someone who um, is usually hired by the promoter or like a club, even if it's at a club or whatnot. And that person will dance with people that come to uh, to enjoy mm -hmm. the. Club time yeah so they'll 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 dance with them this dance and maybe see someone else sitting and and grab them and and dance with them um yeah. just the crowd moving a little bit but then also making sure that everybody's enjoying themselves when they're dancing and sometimes you might as a taxi dancer you'll get that dancer and you pick that dancer that was quiet and it turns out they're fantastic or you may get that beginner but then other people see them dancing and then they'll dance with them and it's really about bringing out the enjoyment. It's not about that dancer being at a certain level. It's about giving them that feel for the dance floor. Because as a beginning, as a beginner, a festival dance floor is intimidating. It, it can yeah. be. 
It can be. Like I said, my, my first um, Congress was uh, the second uh, uh, Chicago Congress. So, okay. and, my, and then my second one was LA. And so we're, like I said, this is going back 20 some years ago. Okay. And LA was, was. Wow. So I have one more question for you, a tough question. And do you think there's an expectation for you as a director to hire more black dancers at your event? Actually, it, it wasn't. Oh, performers? Okay. It, it wasn't. Um, and the reason why is because, because there, there aren't as many. Um, and then also because it, people weren't asking for that, you know? Um, however, I made it a point to do it. I made okay. it a point to do it because, like yes. I said, there weren't dancers looking like me on stage. Especially okay. Okay. And then there's budget, right? Budget mm -hmm. versus cultural representation, right? <laughs> like, well, I have this budget and I have, I want a cross section. It's, it's a little, you know, I go with the big dream first. Um, you know, St. Louis was one of those areas at the time where it, it, no one really knew about St. Louis when I would travel before they're like, Oh, I didn't know that they dance in St. Louis. You dance, you dance pretty well. But I didn't know they dance. <laughs> okay. so it was one of those type of things. Okay. But, um, uh, you know, it, 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 it I, I go with the big, like I said, big budget in our big picture in mind. And then I will go, yeah. I will go there, uh, depending okay. on what I could do. But yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Carmen. What I'm going to do in the efficacy of time is I'm going to skip ahead. We're going to come back. You could take a little break. And I want to bring in Jesenia and Desiree at the same time. Thanks, Carmen. We'll be right back with you, okay? I know, sorry. <laughs> Only because Jesenia has something to share. And Jesenia opened my eyes up about something. Oh. And we're going to bring that conversation live. Oh okay. my God! Oh, let me have. Yesenia, you're muted. Okay, you, okay. you have to tell me exactly why because we, we talk so much. No, it's today. a surprise. <laughs> I know we talk so much. <laughs> I know both of you are like what? But in my conversations with both of you, um, you both opened my eyes to my own biases and my own sometimes very rigid, you know, way of thinking and some things. But I did want to start with a quote. So there's a shared cultural continuity across African peoples that is more important than the varied development of different ethnic groups shown by differences among languages and cultures over time. So here we are, the three of us are connected, complete different cultures, mm -hmm. right? So I would love to you to speak about the blackness of salsa, and then we're gonna go the erasure and codification of black dances. And then we're gonna go into a project that Desi worked on, which was the off 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 Broadway play. Okay. <laughs> almost in, almost in New Jersey. Just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> a Carmen. Okay, so go ahead, Jasenia. Uh, well, it, it's very interesting because like in, in all the projects I've been working uh, recently, um, like, uh, you know, I was like doing a campaign, a fundraiser campaign uh, for Afro-Latino people. And I have like several questions. Why you as a Cuban, you create this campaign supporting people in Brazil and people in Colombia and people in Mexico? You know, why you don't care specifically about Cubans if you are Afro-Cuban, right? So for me, it was very shocking, and I have it, it made me think a lot because I, I do think that uh, the most important thinkers in the African diaspora always have advocated for the the internationalism or the transnational aspect of the of the diaspora. Uh, and being, that being said, it's like we cannot uh, because. Uh, we are right here in America, you know, right, particularly in the United States, but if you are in Cuba, you are in Brazil, everybody came out of Africa with a very similar history, right? Uh, slavery, the slave trade, etc. So we have a commonality, you know, so I can, I think it's undoubtedly that you, Rossi, or you, Desiree, you know, with your particular uh, cultural histories as a person, you know, you are 
my victim cousin. Yes, you are. <laughs> we are panelists cousins. We are connected because, yeah, certainly who knows exactly if the people, the, the black people in, in your, in your, in your gene genealogy came out of the same uh, ethnic group I came from. So I think it's absolutely reasonable to think in, of ourselves in, in terms of uh, a brotherhood, sisterhood, you know, that learn from each other, that benefit from each other. And I think this is a very important aspect that is underlying the, uh, this uh, dance community, the Latin dance community in general. And, and, and the reason why I think this conversation is so important, but uh, 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 the first uh, part of the conversation, we are talking about the prejudice in the Latin dance community, but the resistance, the bigger resistance here is to understand that this salsa that we are dancing, every single one of us, and every single one of the Latin dancers are the creation of black people. This is the creation of black people. This is a black dance, you know, so there is no way for anybody to come into any stage in any point of the world, you know, to teach salsa without even understand that this is a black dance. Because the creators of every single dance forms that are the grandparents of the salsa that we dance today were black people. It came out of the song, it came out of, of a country dance, it came out of the Haitian country dance, very important as well, you know, in the history of the Latin dances uh, in general. So, and if we think of the different repertoires that we use to spice our salsa from cumbia or from, uh, I don't know, samba or whatever, you know, because actually like dancers in, in their past, you know, they are looking to in, in incorporate in different elements. Mm -hmm. One very important thing in the last couple of years has been the Afro-Cuban in the, into the dance community. But this is just, a, for me, it's like kind of uh, the, the branch or the flower, you know, like the last creation on the tree looking back for their own roots. This is what is uh, this, the history of salsa, and this is the history of bachata and every, absolutely every single dance. So, uh, so the racism that we are speaking of right now, you know, Carmen and other dancers, is way more unfair because we, the black people, are the, the bearers of this tradition into the salsa community. But what I do think is uh, the key aspect of this conversation is uh, the, 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 uh, the contradiction between industry versus culture. And this is something that I certainly uh, submit to you as, as the, probably like the essence of this conversation because it's like what makes a promoter think he can ask a dancer put together your hair, you know, or, you know, look look like this or get a ponytail or whatever, you know. It's just pure ignorance, you know. It's pure, pure ignorance, ignorance in one way, but in other way, it is at the trends of the industry, the trends of the industry that think, okay, this aesthetic is going to bring, it's going to be way more marketable, it's going to be way more acceptable, you know, and, uh, you know, in every single place in the, cult in the culture, in, the, in the, this globalized world, in that we see competition, money, marketing, you know, all, all, in all those spaces, you will see racism coming out, you know, because the aesthetics are not driven, you know, necessarily, like the trends of those aesthetics are not uh, thought or conceived, you know, ab around the black people, around the black bodies, around the black aesthetics, around the way that we look. So every single one of us, you know, me with my natural hair, or Bessie with her amazing, lovely hair, I always love it. You right now with your natural hair, you know, every single one of those decisions has been has been a fight and has been a struggle and there is many people that don't like it and many people that do that do reject that yeah. and i've been following the comments and there is a lot of uh, comments about the racism in the dance scene like how many black mm -hmm. women are less asked you know in the social dances you know to dance 
uh, there is this comment, this comment of, of Desi that is absolutely heartbreaking, you know, like she as a black woman, you know, tall and bony, amazing body, you know, but she is sometimes perhaps seen as less feminine, you know, as a skinny uh, white white dancer. You know, we are, but every single one, if we are right here, it's because we have fought against those trends. Yes. You know, and now the, the the work is to keep educating people and telling these people, hey, you promoted, yes, you have the power to let me in or not, but you have to know this is a black band. You know, so <laughs> I have, I have more yeah. entitled to do this band okay. than yourself. The so comments should up. be <laughs> on fire right now. The comments <laughs> should be on mm-hmm. fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. Yesenia. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, wow, Jacenia. I tell you, the conversations we have are amazing. And she always brings a, a new depth to everything. And yes, we're trying to fit this Eurocentric ideal when it's a black dance. How much does that make sense? I, oh, it, how much does that make sense? And it's so much not even shaped the way that um, people have tried to typecast the 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 presentation of who's doing it, but in the way that it's danced. It's looked at. It's so. It's so elitist that that people who have the lines and the. And I mean, and I've studied this. I've been trying to attain for those things and to to sit back and really think about like the natural or or the way that the dance was meant to to the 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 way that the dance came to be is not the way that it's danced right now. And who's put those visions on us? You know, yes. there's so much. Oh, it is a lot. Yeah, but this, so, this, yeah, this go ahead. Also with the build, with the building of a, of an industry, you know, Absolutely. because because uh, because we need to when we look at the history of salsa and and to be honest, uh, salsa is not my strength, but it has become like kind of my observation point because it's like the biggest industry and it's. You know, they, they are way more uh, social dancers. So I, I actually have been always a participant watching, observing, thinking, you know, what is this and what is the meaning of this? But when we, you look at the, the history of salsa, when this became an, an industry, it became an industry when Eddie Torres started working with a ballroom dancer that create a code for every single dance. Then he became, you know, profitable, you know, he became commercial, he started making money after that, because as part of this same history, as part of the, the, the cultural history of salsa, we need to understand that these dances were not done to compete or to perform. This is not the purpose of these dances. The yeah. original cultural purpose of these dances was communion, because this is absolutely every single uh, uh, manifestation <laughs> of African culture. And when I say Latin culture, I am including Latin culture as an African culture is for communion, to com- communicate uh, with the divine, to connect with somebody else, connect with the community. This is the purpose, you know, but when we look at the social industry today, is this what we are dancing? No, this dance, the social industry has made everybody a performer. So we 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 don't go anymore to do to to do, to salsa, uh, social dancing, you know, to have a great time and to connect with the person that we are dancing. We, you know, I call that that we have a bunch of practitioners, right? I call the practicante, you know, that goes to practice exactly the routine that the professor or the teacher just told him and blah blah blah. So if that person comes to practice that routine, they're not dancing with me. They're not dancing with me. They're dancing with with the with the teacher, you know, in the classroom. They're not dancing with me because I am not. I was not in the class. I am human. Oh, I am, so so. But but this is what they call the children of the of the arroz con pollo. And pollo, el arroz con pollo is like the salsa salsa industry. It's not a, a social dance anymore. No, it's a formatic style. It's not. You know, so if you go to dance, you have to be a performer. You have to show up. You know to do the role. And to show up. I even and smile. You have to have I the ponytail too. You have to true. have the ponytail because this is part of it. 
Listen, okay. just, go Desi. Just, just a little point, uh, a little on that is exactly <laughs> because we're, this is a social dance. We're supposed to communicate. So going back, yes, baby. Yes, Theo. So going back to when Leah was talking about how like maybe some people were just like, oh, and you, Rosie, how, um, you know, oh, she's, She's doing her her thing right now. Yes. It's my turn. We're communicating. This can't be, I can't just be like a wallflower here and yes. not contributing to the dance. Guess what? We gonna dance together, me and you. And yes. then and, and I think that that is a stigma, right? Definitely a, mm -hmm. a lot of black women that they are they are contributing too much. Guess what? Uh-uh. <laughs> now he's like, we here to dance. Listen. Exactly. Um, so many points that you said. You are a scholar and a, a woman. Yes. Oh, I'm well, going to bring up one little point because I'm going to publicly take a mea culpa on this. Okay. And it was, Desi, when, we, when you had um, Carmen and the casting came about, because this has come up in comments and in questions for me and things to ask you about. Uh -huh. and, and, and Jesenia woke me up too on this, but you know, tell, tell, tell us what happened with the casting because there were Latinos, but there weren't any dark skinned black people. Yes. Okay, let's talk. There's so many layers to this and I'm so glad that you even just brought this to me because when I was first asked to, to join the, um, the team, the production team, um, I was a choreographer, one of three, four choreographers in the show. So I, I didn't produce it and I wasn't in charge of casting, but I was a part of the production, right? Okay. Um, I was pregnant at the time. So lots of stuff was, was going on. The first uh, thing that I thought of, okay, wow, this show is supposed to take, first of all, it was uh, a major production for Afro-Latin dance. First of all, let's start there. How many opportunities does the Latin dance community get to represent, to just, to be able to, to be yeah. in the show, to, you know, yeah. to be represented? Gloria, on case in point, Gloria Stefan did On Your Feet, that I did not see any really dark skinned black people on that stage. Sometimes, and that's the same thing. You know, so anyway, let's just- Go, oh, okay, go, 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 go. <laughs> and then, and then um, so first line of defense, in the the industry is always nepotism it is what it, it that's just how it works you call your friends boom 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 boom. hey there's an audition you got to be there boom, 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 boom. you know and my it, it's so crazy because my uh my immediate circle of dancers outside of the latin dance industry um more of like my, my commercial dance friends more of yeah. my concert dance friends are like eight badass and you, you know, African. I mean, I'm gonna call her out, Tanise. She's a rocket. Yes. She's a wicked, I have, amazing. I have right? a few friends yes. who are professional dancers who don't dance Latin dance. Yes. Then I have, and in my Latin dance circle, I don't have that many friends that are representing on a hot spectrum in the the black community. I just don't, and that's an unfortunate thing. And I think that there's two. Um, two separations here. I think that, you know, a lot of the people who are in the Latin dance world, um, you know, have come to it from um, a social dance place, right? So they're not viewing, they don't, um, they haven't found or they haven't been exposed to the larger world of dance in New York, right? Some of them have never even gone to see any of the professional shows, any concert dance shows, we don't know about, I mean, there's just, it's just, you know, a disconnect, a, a yes. disconnect and vice versa with people in the dance industry, not seeing the financial incentive to study uh, South mm -hmm. technique, you know, whatever that yeah. is. So in Carmen, um, we had limited time to put the show together to uh, cast the show, to uh, you know, workshop the show, which wasn't really workshop, to learn the show and to put it up. So again, people needed to be able to do the the things asked of them from multiple genres, right? And so okay. the section of like um, 
uh, people. You that needed are, them to know on two. You needed them to know on two. Not only on two, oh, yeah. but more of a, like a commercial jazz, you know? Okay. So um, it's that there's, there's two sides. That's what I'm saying. It's like two different worlds and not a lot of jazz that are, you know, merged. Proficient in both. Yes. And I mean, it's it's crazy because I tried to work with a group of girls and I put it out there. I was like, hey, listen, anybody that wants to work with me, let's actually, you know, if you're from the Latin dance world, I want to train you in things outside of Latin dance so we can just have extended vocabulary, yes. right? And mm -hmm. I didn't get that many people that were interested in that. So yes. definitely like an educational thing. I think that there's a gap in... Um, and there's just not a lot of access and mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the education plays a key, versatility. Mm -hmm. And we're not saying that ballet is the be all and end all and you're not a ballerina, you're not nothing, but there is a versatility that's needed in the professional dance world. If you want to do X amount of gigs, you know, mm -hmm. I can do hip hop and I can do blah, blah. I right. can do this and I can do that. Right. right? And in the same way that you're training for one, you should train for, for the exactly. other. Exactly. Um, They're all on par. Not one is above or below. Not one is on but uh, Your above. repertoire is just makes you stronger. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so Jesenia, when I talked to Jesenia about it, and she said, Rosie, she said, you went back to culture versus industry. And then you told me, what's in New York, Rosie? And you remember you told me that? You said it's on to yeah, dancers. Because it's like it's like the, the theme of, of the play. I haven't seen it yet, but the, the theme of the play is is a, is, is a located in Cuba. So one critique that I have seen often about the play is like, what is the Cuban dancers? You know, what are what are the people that actually know Afro Cuban? You know, or what you know, or what are the black dancers that should be in stage if we are talking about Cuba? You know, so is that the kind of uh, but again, you know, I can I kind of uh, cover already that 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 aspect. I think this is the the indu the industry demand. You know, yeah. if uh, you want to do a, a Broadway show, you know, you who who are you gonna find? You know, and if you want to make a, a, a play that is actually successful, bringing in a bunch of people from different places, if you put the Cuban dancers, who's gonna come? You know, to be honest, you know, it's who's going to come. But if you put uh, on two on two known dancers, then the, uh, the the on two salsa community will come and buy the tickets. You know, this is the reality. We uh, in New York, we have a very small uh, Cuban dance community, and we have a big uh, mambo on two communities. So you know, in terms of marketing, because I started marketing too. So, you know, it's like, I do understand the decisions. It's it's a lot to do with marketing. And then that was actually, well, the casting had a lot to do with marketing from the dancer's perspective, because it was just like, hey, blast this out. So who did it go out to? It went out to other dancers within the Latin dance, uh, within mm -hmm. the on to community, right? Because those mm -hmm. people, the, the show that the producers wanted from me was uh, that, was an on to show. A commercial and it, show. A show that show is gonna show. be sale. Yeah, it wasn't so much that they wanted um they were asking already for a, a look of people. It was people knowledgeable on the things that the choreographers were trying to to yeah. do. And so I think that is the issue then. The issue yeah. is there's not enough people of color, right? Black yeah. people dancing both of those things. Now for sure yeah. Um, yeah, I, and I think that goes back to even talking about like, um, Leah said this, Carmen, I heard her say this is if, if this is my experience too, when I first came to New York and I saw, I went to the New York, I was just social dancing. Rosie with next to Rosie, we were social dancing. I went to New York <laughs> and I was like, wait, hold up. People are professionally dancing this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I felt the same way. It did, it, it, and I was like, mm, some of these people, exactly, were not the, the <laughs> and, and then it was on me by myself to, to find other people. And I was like, wait, there's a company. How do I di audition for that? And there was no audition. Yeah. Just like you had to stay through the ranks of the school and come up. But then you yeah. only get so high 
because if you, the, the director wasn't feeling you, you know, that was like a, a whole thing. So anyway, I'm so grateful for Eddie Torres though, to give me an opportunity to, to even showcase me in a little, the little sliver of the world. Um, but it, it's just crazy. There just needs to be more opportunities. Yeah. No, but so, I, like, one thing that I, before I am going to make silence because all of you are going to talk too bad. Uh, I, you know, I just remember that we met. You remember when we, we met uh, in the Bembe Salome Calle with mm -hmm. Tina Frederick. And she, she was one of the person I, I suggest, uh, Rossi, because he's one of the choreographers that merged uh, these two worlds, you know, of uh, these friends, you know, that, uh, uh, social dancing and, and kind of the history and everything. And it was amazing for me to meet you right there in mm -hmm. that experimental uh, piece that what do you dance on? But yeah. I do recommend absolutely everybody to watch because yeah. it kind of would re really hit on the nail of this conversation in this competition that is everywhere, you know, between yes. Salsa and Anto Salsa. You know, I yes. think she really uh, contributes <laughs> to this conversation yeah. with her that work. And one of the things that we want to talk about is dancer preparation, education. You know, you want to be hired. When I was a dancer back, they, you know, lots of years ago, um, you want to throw down the rope. You want to, but at the same time, that rope says, you know, we need XXXXYZ for you to get this gig, right? So you want to pull the, all the dancers up that you can, but at the same time, you need the dancers to have this background because this is what the show calls for. So I just really wanted to make that clear because of some of the questions that I've gotten in the comments, right? As dancers, the onus is on us to get that training and preparation. If we want to branch out outside of, you know, dancing in festivals and dancing for our community. If you want to do an off-Broadway show, you need that other type of training as well, right? And then also Desi says that, hey, you know, reaching out to dancers as well and saying, seeing what's out there, you know, having the producers of these shows throw a broader net as well. Yes. And, and yes, and, and uh, moving forward, cause I, you know, at the time I didn't even think that it was my responsibility as not the producer, as not as the, the casting director, just the choreographer to, you know, to demand that. But yeah, you know, I need to see other people who look like me and who look darker than me in the shows that I'm a part of. Yeah. And that's also- And, and making- And, yeah. of. and, and talking to those producers and directors and saying, hey, you know, did you go to XYZ school? Did you go to Ailey? Did you post this up there? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so anybody have any questions or any comments? And my little neighbor just ran in. I'm gonna, I have a, my neighbor, he's like eight years old and he just ran in my house. I'm going to go off camera for a second, okay? And you guys, um, go ahead and talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. <laughs> anyway, so back to camp. No, <laughs> um, no okay. I, I, I mean, that's what I was going to say is that, you know, it is, it has been uh, trouble yeah. to, to find that. But there's a lot of people who yeah. deserve the chance to be, uh, well, that's what I was gonna say, is it different from Broadway? Because I have a lot of friends on Broadway and yeah. still on an audition and they'll be like dancing circles around white dancers who are mediocre, they still get the job. And in this regard, like in the my experience with Carmen and the casting of Carmen, it wasn't that we were turning down qualified, um, you know, not even qualified, I think that's the wrong word. Uh, you know, people that were dancing circles around other people, it wasn't that way. Um, and I just wanted to put that across there, if anybody gets that. Really, let's just look at how things are in any other Latin film or, or production that we've seen. Have you seen any females that really look or is the same complexion as myself or Candace? You're saying in in film? In, in any any production, any Latin production. Have we seen that? So it's it's in like, like you were saying, what, what I'm what I'm meaning is there there 
I know we talked a little bit about so we need to um, go outside to get other training, but we have people in those other trainings. We do have Alvin Ailey. We do have ladies uh, yeah. that. Absolutely. It, that was my point is that I want them. I'm like, come on, friends, come into the Latin dance world so you can learn how to social dance because a large portion of the show was also social dance. So mm -hmm. you can just be like from Ailey coming over trying to think you're going to go ding, 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 and then you was going to get the job. It wasn't work like that because there was a lot of qualified girls who were doing the heels class. Jessica Castro was one of the choreographers for that and they were killing it, but they couldn't, they couldn't dance partner dance. They had no results to turn back. And I could not teach them in two weeks the choreography and how to dance uh, on a professional level on to dance on two. It just it, it just couldn't happen. <laughs> and then vice versa, where there was, I mean, I could name like top girls who are traveling the world right now who came into audition but didn't get the job because they couldn't pick up the other choreography. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, it, that makes but this is only we're talking about a very specific thing, and that's not the uh, salsa world in general or bachata world, it was outside of that. Yeah, okay. This mm -hmm. is what, what's like more theatrical dance. Yeah. So, yes. I, yeah. Yeah. So but I was wondering. Go ahead. Yesenia, you on mute. <laughs> I'm trying to be very disciplined about sound, no, but, but uh, I think there are like two, two main issues that you are talking about right now. One is like how a, a, an American dancer, you know, like the one that takes the traditional path uh, of, of a dance formation through dance education, universities, etc., like you did, you know, what type of education they have. Well, we know that barely, you know, in those spaces, they are like right now a presence of West African dance. You know, but there is no Latin dance formation. I interviewed Sita uh, a, like a month ago, you know, and we were talking exactly about that. You know, it's like she, as a, as a, as a, as a Dominican person, after she finished school, she has no idea about any Latin dance. She has to look it on her own. You know, so this is not like like what the institutions, you know, the, the, this is another form. We are colliding here with different ways of colonization because this is the conversation that we're having here, right? So the no, institution absolutely. is colonial in the way that they say, okay, dance technique, what do you have to learn? You have to learn ballet, you have to learn contemporary dance, and you have to learn West African dance. Who have an idea that and also black people dance? You wait, know? And the, the West African dance is an elective. It's not even a mandatory thing. Ah, <laughs> voila, voila. So, but when you look at the continent of Latin America, you know, how many dancers, you know, that are not only part of this industry, but in terms of the production of popular dances, you know, in the 19th and 20th century, the majority of dancers came out of Latin America. So how this is not part of the formation of traditional dancers? One, one big problem. That's a so big Leah, problem. Leah, what and was your dance another, trip? Oh, okay. There is another problem that Carmen is pointing out that I think is very important too, that is the crisis of narratives about black people. You know, we have a problem with that. And that's why I create my play, Women Auditions. It was an experiment. It's not perfect. But I feel the need to tell a story of black women that was not a disaster, that was not a tragedy, you know, that was not a loser, that was not, you know, because this is a problem that we also have. So we don't have, we need this, the, the, the colonial issue, the colonial problem. The second is that the salsa dancing is part of it, you know, but it collides with all the other colonial forms that, that has to do with how you get formed as a dancer, how do you get training, what is valuable as the, that, as, as the training of a dancer has to have, you know, or what type of narrative are we going to promote, you know, as valid to put in the big stage or to, or to make a movie, you know, we have a problem that is, transcend you know the dance community but it's connected to that too and we need to pay attention as educators as, as creators in the future to, to kind of bring more you know to, to kind of counter this issue this is a fight that i think every single one of us should be take seriously i echo that yes 
Amen. I was wondering if Leah, if you had anything to add to that as um, when you were doing your training, when you wanted to become a solo artist and what type of training did you go into? And then I also want to talk to Carmen about when you have your dance companies, do dancers come to you that already have that dance training from another genre of dance? So first Leah and then Carmen, okay? Um, well, yeah, and thank you. Thank you for inviting me into this piece of the conversation. Um, you know, I mean, when I knew that I wanted to become a soloist, um, I knew that it was going to require me to, because it's very difficult as, I mean, we all know, it's very difficult. Like salsa is a part of it. So it already is difficult to kind of step out and be a solo artist, be a solo female artist, and really be able to command the stage, right? So. Mm -hmm. You know, I already knew that I was gonna have to deal with um, with that, you know, across the board. And so, you know, I mean, it's again, what what the the issue that I keep coming up against though is that it didn't matter what I did. <laughs> you know, it didn't matter how much training I took. It didn't matter how how determined, how eager, how hungry I was. None of that mattered. It and and that and that was the difficulty. So, no matter how I pivoted, no matter what I tried differently, no matter what different partner I tried, no matter what extra training I was willing to do that I was telling my partners I'm willing to do, that I was telling my director I'm willing to do, none of it mattered. And because I was a very self-actualized person, I continued to try to, you know, address the issue and be very open to like, okay, what what will it take to to make the right kind of changes to be available for this? And it there just was not an answer. It, it's it's almost that glass ceiling thing that you hit upon in corporate America. So for mm -hmm. me, I feel like there are, um, yes, we can talk about, um, you know, well, yeah, you know, and, and the situation is maybe a little different now and that's why we're having these conversations so that it can be different, you know, so that people can, you know, feel like, okay, if I train myself well enough, I actually can aspire to be here and be there and get to this this level. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's this aspect um, and as I was watching the comments and I hope we get the chance to talk about this of like what you what what things can be done to kind of move it forward because again, I am of the old regard of the old school. And so you know it's kind of like wh what things do I wish were there that would have helped me to continue okay. to keep trying to keep you know so, so I see Carmen I, nodding. I yeah. just want to make let this go to, hold on, Desi. Let me go to Carmen because Carmen's been nodding and nodding and nodding. So I want to make sure she doesn't lose that thought. Yeah, Carmen. Uh, no, just exactly like Leah was saying. I mean, back when when we were starting dancing, it was about the training. The whole the whole concept and the thought about salsa and understanding salsa and bachata is that you got trained. I was trained under some of the best. I was trained under some of the top in the industry. Tell us their you know, names, please. Jo Say their Josie names. Neglia. Josie Neglia. I was trained under under um, Edie, the salsa free. I was trained under um, uh, uh, Addie Rodriguez, Razum Taz out of New York. So we're talking about old school Sion, you know, old school stuff. So the, it, it was totally, so it didn't matter who I was trained under. You see, it didn't matter who I was trained under. I was looked over completely when I when I stepped on the scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a director, Carmen, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As a, as a dance director, when dancers come to you though, and they're versatile in other styles as well, do we tend to favor those other artists, those other dancers? So yeah, they dance salsa, but those have this jazz background. They already have the flexibility. They can do the splits. They can, you know. So they bring more. I'm, I'm just asking to put it out there. I, I have my own answer for that, but no, I'm just I saying, what happens? What happens yeah. then in those teams? Well, I for for me, I'm I'm coming from a different perspective because I'm also coming from a different region in the in the United States, which is St. Okay. Louis. Okay, so mm -hmm. St. Louis, St. Louis, like I said before, was a city that never understood or never they thought salsa was chips and dip. Okay, mm -hmm. just keep it real. So I'm coming from that perspective. So most people that step into the dance world here have not had any type of training at all. So, uh -huh. you know, so those that did come to me um, as as a as a uh, 
to be on one of my teams, I usually would split the team up in maybe two because I always had the feeling that I was never going to let anyone um, feel like they weren't accepted because I, un I understood that for my personal self, what that felt like. But yes. I wanted to give everybody a chance, but there were different levels of that chance, if that makes yeah. sense. What I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. I, I just I said, again, that it's not, I wasn't saying that there is no, uh, there's not enough trained black women out there. And I was not saying that black women need to train in something else to be able to dance salsa or bachata at all. We were talking about this one show that had a mix of oh, everything yeah. in it. So for them to be yeah. able to do that, they had to be able to do oh, yeah. that. But there's an overlap into the salsa community as well. When that dancer comes in that, mm -hmm. and that's the economics of dance, right? Where yeah, you were yeah. raised and you went to dance school since you were a little girl, and now you're trying salsa. And then suddenly the girl that dances real criollo down home is pushed aside for the girl that, you know, has and relevé it, and I'm pointing. That down. girl got the sauce. She got the sauce. But they get looked over for the girl that could point her, that points her toes. <laughs> I just, mm -hmm. did, you know. This is at the point where we've yes. seen um, the dance begin to be named different dances. Right mm. now, it's now not just bachata; it's sensual bachata. Or now, it's not chisón, mm. but it's urban kiss. You know, now it's not yeah. this that. You know, and it's like I, I think someone was saying, "I'm not. I don't want to say uh, it's a whitewashing of different things, but it's a different aesthetic that's presented." Mm -hmm. You know, yes, uh, for sure. So, Candice, yeah. you're trained in other styles, of, and you you came from a gymnastics background, right? Yes. Which makes it a hell of a lot easier for you to be upside down and more comfortable <laughs> upside down than most of us. So what are you hearing? What do you think of everything we've been saying? Um, well, I mean, I basically agree kind of what everybody is saying. And I think it comes more so down to like a representation of what we see and, you know, like what we see that's out there it comes to from the promoter's perspective, from the dancer's perspective, how everybody's expecting to see a certain thing, a certain way. Um, mm -hmm. They're expecting to see a certain skin type, a certain hair, a certain way you move. And there's already that expectation out there. So talking about black women coming into the scene and being there, if you're not seeing yourself out there, is like where's the motivation like erica was saying before like when she was looking at the gymnast you know she already just looked at them without even thinking anything and subconsciously mm -hmm. she was just like this is not for me even though she hasn't even like gone out there and put everything in there to try it and just, you were a gymnast the look yeah um <laughs> but just the look of it you know just saying hey you know I, that's what i see and i don't see myself mm -hmm. so like especially speaking from like young girls coming into this, I think is very important, but like kind of going on, like I understand Desiree, what you were saying, how about this was a certain thing, but in general, like talking about the promoters, yes, you know, you want to see more people that look like you on stage, but mm -hmm. on the upside of things, it's just like, you don't want to put things, people want to hire good quality too. So it's like, how much good quality do you have with the people that you see that look like yourself as well? But then, you know, mm. the people that look like us, we need to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to even get there or the knowledge and the education to say, okay, hey, you know, I know that I actually need to train in this hard to be a certain way, no matter what color your skin is or where you have to be, like the training has to be there in general. It's like when people pick up hobbies, like a lot of times, you know, salsa is the hobby, it's fun, you know, you wanna go out there. But when people are starting hobbies outside of dance, like say, hey, you're doing, you're picking up woodworking or you're picking up bowling, you invest in that. You go and buy your bowling shoes and your bowling ball and you pay for people to check your form to make sure you're doing this because, whatever hobby you're doing becomes not as fun if you're not good at it or if you don't feel confident in what you're yeah. doing. You know, if you're always feeling like self-conscious, like, hey, you know, well, I'm not this good. And, you know, I'm hitting a gutter ball every single time. You know, you're not going to stick with it. So I feel like it's the same thing in salsa. Yes, it's fun. You need to go out there and meet people. But uh, there's a sense of training that needs to be there, too. And I think because of the social aspect, sometimes the training gets lost with that the idea of hey i need to train and then i think 
you know, going back through everything, the representation that we have as women, like if we're not getting asked to social dance because, you know, people think that the good social dancers look a certain way or they only want to dance with people that look this way, okay. well, then we get discouraged and then now we're not in the social dance. So now people that are in it aren't seeing mm -hmm. ourselves. So it's just like a full circle of, you know, representation. I feel like mm -hmm. I keep going back to that word, but um, there has to be more out there and more encouragement mm -hmm. and then, you know, more yeah. training and everything. It's just like a full cycle of what we mm -hmm. expect to see. How can we change the expectation to, hey, people want to see this, even though you might think mm -hmm. you might be in an old school mentality yeah. of seeing a certain way or this is what you think that people want to see. But oh, in reality, yeah. people want to see. So, Candace, yeah, Candace, you're actually bringing us into our one of our final topics. Right. Which is. Uh, representation and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break format right now if it's okay and before I've been I've been doing um, single interviews but in the interest of time because I try I'm gonna really try to keep it at maybe 10 minutes over but I really want to keep it to two hours and we're already at an hour and 50 minutes right um, I want to go to Erica and I want to talk a little bit about Oh, no, sorry. Let me go back to Candace. Candace, you and I had a conversation. Then I'm going to finish up with Erica. And then we're going to be talking about um, that representation. Uh, we had a talk, right? And I was real mad because I was like, oh, you had such a great show in Chicago and you got a standing ovation. And why didn't you close the show, right? So me, I was like, that's racist. <laughs> right away. That's so messed up. Mama. And then, so, I mean, you can finish the conversation, like the part of it that I didn't know that you told me, right? Right. So, yeah. So, I feel like that comes up as well. But as I was telling Rosie, that was not my only show that night. I was performing <laughs> two, I was performing twice. I had a show oh, yeah, twice, with my yeah. partner, Fuquan, and we were doing mm -hmm. partner work. We did a bachata routine, which we were, got the standing O for, and mm -hmm. we were placed in the middle of the show. But I also had a performance with Stacey Paulin, a phenomenal dancer um, out here out of Atlanta as well. And we were doing this P90X routine at the same night. Um, and so mm -hmm. I feel like as... Mm -hmm. um, a promoter and as the stage manager, the um, they, they spread to, you out. They had to spread. They have to spread you out in a certain mm -hmm. way to where I had time to change, had time to catch mm -hmm. my breath in order to, you know, mm -hmm. have that performance. And Desi knows about that because one time, one Congress, I had her between myself, say cool, and her own thing. She had like five shows in one night. <laughs> I'm just happy you didn't run out on the stage naked. Just kidding. <laughs> you were changing so many times. <laughs> but but you, I was there for that show, and they killed it. They killed and it. Definitely represented. And what will happen is that the next person that, hopefully, when Corona and all of this, the coronavirus is over, it's like, if then you're hired again, and you're not bumped up in that lineup, right, because we all know closer to the end is where, you know, where everyone wants to be closing the show, and then that's that's a that's an issue because you had that standing ovation, right? You had yeah. that recognition. And you know, I think it's um I think it's the mindset between the promoters and whoever the stage director is at the time. Okay. I think it's a learning curve. Like I said, you know, we're always they're always looking at okay, I'm paying this artist to be here. I'm paying them the most money. So they definitely need to be at the very, very end. And just taking the whole mindset of putting everybody, I think that is amazing at the end of the show and then having everything that's not so amazing in the beginning of the show to where people are not even coming down to watch the beginning. Oh, of the show that's anymore. true. They're only coming down to watch the end. But then it's like, you know, you set a stage, you get a performance, you take notes on the crowd's reactions. They clapped for this couple. They didn't clap for this couple, even though they were at the end. You know, what kind of reaction, what routine were they doing? What shows were in between them? What show came first? What show came last? Were the audience, were they engaged? Were they just bored and then they woke up? Like taking notes on, you know, the differences of who clapped, who didn't, and then to take that into consideration for the next performance, when you're hot, the next, when you're, the next exactly. time, to say, okay, well, this couple 
the audience really liked, they were doing yeah. this type of a routine. Yeah. Maybe if I see somebody in tech with a similar routine, I can put them maybe closer to the end or and then, put them in the middle. So the show is not, you're not going to sleep and then waking up, you know, that you're entertained throughout the whole entire night. Okay. So here's a weird question, a wild question, whatever you want to call it. Is there a quota for black dancers on lineups? It's yes, no, I never thought about it. Or you, you bugging Rosie. But is there a quota? Like, whoa, we have five black sacks already. Let let let's spread them out a little bit. So I, I don't know if this is an open question, but I was just gonna say that more so of um, oh, there's too many black people. I think it's like they're it ends up being like the same type of performance and the same voice, the same artistry. And I think that's where it's like black people have a perspective. It's Black America, uh, United States Syrians. <laughs> United <laughs> States Syrians. <laughs> and uh, somebody from a different culture. So it's like, it should be a mix of perspectives and viewpoints and artistries. And it's it ends up being like the same type of vocabulary that we're seeing time and time again. So what I think it is, is they, they want to see the same thing. They, I, 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 that's all I see is like the same thing. And that night, Candace, you and Stacey, you had an amazing performance. There was something different. Now, if I don't think that they would have presented 10 shows like that, you know what I'm saying, on that stage. So more so than just too many black people, I feel like it's too many black voices with their specific viewpoints. So the only person on this panel who never has a problem with a standing ovation is Erica. <laughs> Kudos. 17 years with Eddie Torres, 11 years as his dance partner. So uh, just just tell us a little bit about that. I'm going to keep you, just everyone on the panel, okay? Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, what can I say? You know, that experience. Well, first, let me backtrack. You know, I'm mm -hmm. someone, um, and, you know, hearing, you know, everyone's viewpoints and everyone's experiences, I'm someone that it's all about your history, origin, you know, know your history, know your source, know where, know where things come from. And, you know, being with Eddie and hearing the story, you know, I get tons of questions and I ask myself, you know, for a person who's responsible for pretty much everybody, why isn't that education there? Because if that education was there, then there's certain questions I feel that shouldn't be asked. Mm -hmm. Okay. And throughout my journey, you know, being there, um, you know, number one, I do feel it is the instructor's responsibility to teach the history. For example, Rosie, you're a teacher, right? What's the first yeah. thing you do when you have your, uh, and, and Yesenia as well. Yeah. I, don't know who else, I, I don't know if I missed the who else is in education. What's the first thing you do? What is what? You talk about the history, mm -hmm. you talk about the origin. Mm -hmm. And after that, you have your bullet points. Mm -hmm. You have everything else that comes after that. You know, do we know the history? Do we know where Eddie came from? Do we know where Maria came from? Do you know who's black? Do you know this? Do you know what hospital he was born in? Do you know, do you know the struggles that he had to go through just to even save the culture? Because remember, ladies, at one point, Mambo was going down. And his vision, it was all about... I got to do what I need to do to save the culture. I got to do what I need to do because him and Tito Puente, I got to do what I have to do. Do we know the production that he made where he got dancers, people, as a matter of fact, let me backtrack, people that had zero to little salsa dance experience, had to train them, start them from, from, from scratch, different backgrounds, and get them all together to do a tribute to Machito at the Apollo Theater. Do we even know who Machito is? You know? So do we know who Tito Puente is? So this is something that he always, always instilled in us in class. Not even to mention in the classroom, everybody's welcome. Mm -hmm. There's no nonsense. You leave that energy out the door. So already that tone is already set in the environment that we're not gonna tolerate anything. You know what I mean? Maria, good morning. You know, like she always says, good morning. You know what I mean? Welcome mm -hmm. everybody. My son, my daughter. Is there anybody, is, do we have any visitors here? 
Oh, St. Louis. Oh, welcome. She has everyone clap up. Hey, welcome. We got St. Louis in the building. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. Oh, bienvenido, Brazil, Brazil. Because you know what? That's the environment that we create. Now, does that happen in other dance schools? But the importance of it, even down to credit. Eddie always gives credit to where, who, who, do we know who his mentor was? Like, who is his mentor? Who inspired him? He will say, back in the days, there was no one, two, three, five, six, seven. You go on the floor, you have that connection with that person. You know what I mean? And it was just turn patterns, wasn't, you know, because you go shine, ah, you know what I mean? And he always gives that credit, which is very, very, very important. You know, I'm, I, I understand the trend. I understand, you know, hey, we have to move. We have to move forward, but we cannot lose the history and the origin of things in, you know, as, as the trend is going. And I think that's, that's a big, that's a big problem. That's what yeah. happens. We tend to not to, you know, to forget the source, even to the music that he plays. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, for the years I've been with them, I, in the seminars and the workshops and people who know, like I'm like in the studio, every talk about training, like in the studio, every single day, I always come out learning something. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like I told you, uh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to say, you reminded me of that because that's exactly what you'd said to me before. Right. Right. Get in there. If you want to dance with Eddie, he's not going to call you. You, you got to be in his class. Right. 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 Sorry. Right. Go ahead. Um, sorry. Oh, Rosie, I just lost my uh, I'm so sorry. Oh, Bad okay. moderator. Right. Right. So even to the music, the music that he selects and that he teaches, He'll tell you who's the artist, what are the words, and he even translates for the ones who don't understand Spanish because of the importance of it. Talk about what the injustice that him and Maria, what they had to go through, the, you know, the being humiliated, being not, you know what I mean? And, and that vision that he had mm -hmm. to pave the way so that we don't have to experience. And you know what? And again, it is going to, you know, it is a continuing fight. We still have to continue to do it. But, you know, for people not to know, you know, and as instructors, again, I feel it is your responsibility. Also, it is your responsibility as a student to do your research. You got to do your research. You know what I mean? Like, what did this, what, you know, okay, I want to go to this dance school. What does this person, you know, what did this person do? How long has this person been training? Considering that now the scene is different. Now you could take two lessons. I'm a professional dancer. <laughs> Two classes. I'm a professional dancer. I'm a choreographer. I'm a this. I'm a that. You know what I mean? So, like, do your research. You know, oh, how come, how come, you know, uh, uh, um, Eddie doesn't do this. Eddie doesn't do that. How come, you know, Maria doesn't have this, you know? Do we know who Erica Fignoli is? Do we know who Desiree Godsell is? Do we know, um, I can go Mambo D. Do we know... Tiffany Benson, do we know Maisha Morris? Like I can go on and on and on. You mm -hmm. have to do and had you done your research, you would know. Always yes. back to the roots, always give the credit. Mambo, what happened? Now when I tell mm -hmm. people I dance Mambo, they look at me like I'm crazy. Why? Or oh, what is that? Why? But when I tell them it's salsa that I dance, oh yes, I know the salsa. Where did we lose that? What happened? So these are the kind of things that, again, you know, it's just the education, do your research. Um, also, um, you know, as an organizer, you know, I, I, for those who don't know, you know, I organize the Social Paul Dance Fiesta. And I make that theme, I make that theme um, a red top affair. I ask everybody to wear red and there's a reason why I do that. You know, guys, let me know if I'm going off because I know we got like, we got like a time thing, okay? Um, you know, the reason why I ask everybody to wear red is because you know the message that I, that the message that I want to get across is you know what it doesn't matter if you're tall if you're short if, you know your gender your your race wh whatever it is get what is the one thing ladies that we share what is that we're all Afro and we have the same no 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 meaning we have the same blood that's why yeah. we bleed we bleed the same color no matter what so then you know what I create that environment to let people know it's all about unity, it's all about inclusion. So I do feel, you know, also as an organizer, you know, you you gotta, you know, have that, you know, set that tone that there's certain things that's not gonna be tolerated in my event. 
At the same time, too, as someone who's attending an event, because I get it. Like, you guys know the stress. When you're organizing something, okay, uh, are people even going to show up to my event? Um, you know, are the dancers ready? Am I going to be on time? You're so bombarded with so many things that it leaves room for you to miss the red flags. So as someone who's attending my event, you got to bring these issues, raise that awareness so that I can address it, so that I can, you know, I can be able to target, you know, target these things. But that's a whole nother story. But, you know, these are the th this is what keeps me. This is the stuff that I want to teach. This is what's taught to me, which I, you know, really, really think, think is, you know, extremely, extremely, extremely important. Uh, important. Does anyone want to add? add? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Is somebody going to add? Somebody? I'm sorry, your mics are off. Candace. Well, I know. Oh, Candace, did you? <laughs> well, I'm gonna, just going to add two quick points. Yeah. Um, to uh, to the to the comments that um, a couple of us have made about like what the industry is now, I mean like that's a whole other like we could do a whole entire panel discussion on what the industry is now because I remember when it changed. I remember when it changed um, when we began to have the competitions, and I remember the reason to have like the, the ESPN competition and such. And so you know there so there's there it's beautiful and it's wonderful to aspire to a another level with your dance and your expression and yet also there has to be an appreciation for where where the dance began and again when we talk about solutions i feel like another part of the solution as well is that how desiree spoke to the fact that people are right now back in my day everybody was was content and wanted to be different they all wanted to be their own, have their own expression of what they were doing, right? Okay, so we were all dancing salsa mambo, you know, we we're all dancing this genre, but we all wanted to express it differently. And so we used to give each other props, like, oh my gosh, you really, you came out the bag with that one. My, my, my next performance is gonna be off the chain and totally different. And you can look back at all of those performers from back in the day, 10, 15 years ago, and you see how each, each team had a unique presence. And now everyone wants to be the same. And I think that has to do with our world right now, with social media, with, you know, I mean, I think it has to do with a lot of that. And so we have to pay attention and really stress making a change in that. And, um, and I, you know, and I'm going to have another discussion later to talk about like some of my own struggles with that being in the scene for so long and, and being like, dang, well, I guess I'm not doing the popular thing anymore. Am I still relevant? What does that mean? You know, because I'm dancing because of my love for it, and you know, but am I still relevant? So that, so that's one thing. And then the other thing that um, Erica, you talked about in terms of like the, you know, speaking to the culture and as an instructor, making sure that you're you're doing that. That's to me, I feel like that's very easy when you're in New York, and I feel like that's something commonly that you all have is that you know you all have a New York City experience and New York experience. What I have struggled with is that when I am being true to myself and true to how I want to teach the dance and how I want to educate and how I want to express what it is that I am trying to express in it. And I teach here in Little Rock in the middle of, you know, every stereotype you can think of Little Rock does exist about about Arkansas. You know, I mean, and 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 what you spoke about, Yesenia, in terms of the commercialization of the industry, that becomes a struggle and what you talked about Rosie as well about like okay you have to continuously be checking in with yourself about what am I doing this for why am I doing this am I doing this for my for a paycheck am I doing this to express the love of it am I doing it because it speaks to my soul and I have to you know just just do this soul work because it's my soul <laughs> work you know so I feel like you yeah. know there are all these there's all these layers that yeah. prob that were probably meshing that probably mm -hmm ourselves yeah and that's the thing with this panel today like i said at the beginning we're not going to be able to solve everything or go that in depth into everything but i'm hoping like i listened to that first panel and took things from it then somebody that's listening to this panel will you know pick up the baton and run with it and say okay the next panel is this right because these are not issues that we can just have you know five ten minute segments about we're already into the two hour mark and jesenia does have to say goodbye to us right now so Jesenia, a few words. 
Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God, this has been so awesome. And I told uh, Rosie like two days ago, this is just gonna be one, but I bet you have to do a series because there are like, so many issues. And I think like every single one of you brought so many interesting that deserve a deeper conversation. And I bet there is a lot of people that want to intervene and, and participate. And, and I, I don't know, I have learned so much from every single one of you. And I don't know, I, I just hope, Rosie, do not give up, keep <laughs> on, you know, bring another panel, maybe not every week, you know, but I, I think this is absolutely necessary and you have provided to me and for what I'm feeling the other dancers to right here in this panel, an opportunity to articulate concerns and things that have been bothering us for so long and that are uh, critical and, and super important to improve the environment of this industry. And, and, and because for sure, every single one of, of, of you love this so much. Mm -hmm. So we deserve the, our space in this industry, we deserve to bring in way more people of color. We need, we need to make this a, a more enjoyable space, you know, for dancers, you know, of every type. You know, I am a big fan of Erica. You know, I've been kind of pushing you to talk a little bit more about your physicality and how this, you know, impacts your career because you're such a unique uh, a partner to Eddie Torres. You are very different for every single partner. But I also have to say, Desiree, you know, it's so amazing that you pick precisely Alex, you know, as your partner, because this brings so much freedom into the dance scene. When we have different bodies, you know, and we give them in the hot start, you know, we allow all the people to feel welcome, you know. So I just think this is very important, and hopefully Rossi will have other opportunities to keep talking about this. Thank you, everybody. I'm sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Can I just say something really, really quick before you go? Yes. Okay. So first, I wanted to say, you know, thank you to you specifically because, you know, you you nominated me, and this is how I was able to, you know, to find out, you know, what's going yeah. on. And you know, and I just want to thank you. And you know what? That really, really made me feel good. And I think, you know, just empowering each other, and we don't understand sometimes the things, the gestures, the things that you can do that make someone feel good. Desi, something that you don't even know. Like, I remember when I debuted with Eddie, and you could even see the video, hearing your voice, Erica! You know, to this day, I think, you know, I think about that, you know, and, you know, it, us empowering each other, you just, you just never know. It just felt good. So I want to say thank you, Yesenia. And I look forward to, you know, Carmen, Candice, Lee, you know, I'm meeting you guys for the first time. And I look forward to be that, you know, to empower. And the same thing for me, too. Like, I need you guys to teach me, you know, as someone who organizes events, you know, I would love to know what worked, what did not work, because that's what we do, right? It's a learning process. So I definitely, going forward, I think in terms of us empowering each other, it's really important. It's really, really important. So that's just one I wanted to add. Gracias, so Yesenia. Bye, everybody. Bye. Let's meet us, okay? Okay. Be a stranger. Bye. Okay, no. <laughs> so we're going to close it out with some fire. And I'm just going to go straight to it. If black men don't bring us up on that stage, we're not seen. And it's not up to a damn Congress. It's not up to a promoter. If you have a chance to get a woman on that stage and you pick a woman who's not as good, who doesn't have the training, but then you bring up another stage. And meanwhile, the sister's waiting and, and you know, and, and, you know, you just leave a bench warming for the whole game. How's that fair to us? And sorry, that was supposed to be a question. <laughs> I just snorted in front of millions of people. <laughs> so so <laughs> take it, somebody. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> so uh, should I keep going or did I dig a hole in a deep enough hole for myself? <laughs> I I can definitely speak on it. Okay. I can most definitely speak on it. Just, um, I mean, again, I'll tell you all that I became a solo artist. I became a, 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 a someone dancing outside of a, outside of a dance company. 
specifically because I couldn't find opportunities to dance with a partner. And I and 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 the really difficult part was back then I was friends with all of the black male dancers at that time. We were all crew, you know, and again, coming out of my experience as um as a like a, as a somebody that came out of the HBCU world and um, and in the HBCU world, you know HBCU world, your black excellence. If you get someplace, you're going to bring somebody else with you, right? You get to a position, you're going to make sure that your people let you. If you can, you're going to assist your people in that. That was not the case in the dance community 15 years ago. And so, what I what I will say, so the positive of it is that Seiku put me on stage. Seiku created a dance company back in the day, and half of the dance company was always black people. But in terms of me actually being able to be a a partner, for me to actually be able to be, like I said, I became a solo artist because I could not I could not pursue my own goals, and so. And then as a solo artist, still struggled to pursue my own goals because I, these people were my crew, they were my friends and they were putting other women on and they were promoting other women's careers. And I was just like, okay, well, I guess I just gotta work hard over here by myself, you know? And, yeah. and, I, and, I, and it's still happening today. And that pride that I see, feel when I see Candace and Fuquan dance, right? Oh my gosh. It's two beautiful black people on stage dancing the dance that was born from us. It feels like when the first, when I learned that flamenco came from Africa and I saw an African woman dancing flamenco and then suddenly flamenco just went and it made so much sense. The syncopation, the this, the that, it just made sense, right? And I'm not diminishing women of European ancestry. I'm not diminishing other women, but there's something so beautiful to see in that because it's the roots. It's what Yesenia was talking about. And I'm going to shoot to Carmen now. Carmen, my name is, you know, Paco. <laughs> Sorry, stereotypical name. I'm Spanish. I'll take the hits, right? And I'm famous, right? I used to dance with Leah, but now I dance with, you know, another girl. Will you still hire me? I'm still Paco and I'm very famous. Will you be like, no, you can't come because you don't have Leah anymore? Or are you going to hire me because I'm the name? Well, the, the problem is you have to see. And, and the thing with um, organizers is that now we're in a situation where we really have to vet who's out there. It mm -hmm. may be an issue. They may be uh, partners with someone one week or one year, and then the <laughs> next week not their partner anymore or a couple months. At some point, it could be you hire them to perform with such and such and such and such and <laughs> later it's changed. So partnerships is different and, and you have to look at it from that perspective. And that and that's really what I what I vet and what I gauge off of looking at. <coughs> Excuse um, me. Like like I said before, I stay open because I I know that I want to see people looking like me on stage. And I know for the 20 some odd years that I I have and the only person I saw was Leah. And then when that when when she was there, then I pushed for my four brown skinned girls to get on stage. So I'm I'm opening that up from as as a director and as as a promoter for myself to be able to anyone who is who is like you said trained or or anyone really to be on stage to have that opportunity. So I may be coming at it from a different perspective, different that, okay, different region, you know, different region of the country, different. Um, different uh, experiences. I'm coming up from a very different space. Okay. So anybody else want to add? Because I definitely can monopolize this section and I won't. But anybody else want to add in? I do. Um, well, oh, okay. No, Candice, go ahead, girl. All right. Well, um, my um, two cents would be, I think it has to go a bunch like expectation and what their goal and expectation is. So if you have this black male, and he has a choice between a light skinned girl or a darker skinned girl, you know, some of the thoughts that might be going through his head is gonna be like, well, am I gonna get hired for this event with this girl in my promo pick? Because that's the first thing, you know, any promoter is gonna see is gonna see the picture, you know, and then they show you the dance and then you say, this is what I can do. But the first thing they're gonna have is that promo pick that goes on the banner, that goes on the website and everything. And it's like, which, 
girl is going to be sexier? Which girl is going to be um, portrayed more? Who is who am I going to get hired more with this girl or this girl? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I, I think it has to do with that. And then options too. Like, you know, circling back around to what I was talking about earlier is if we don't start to see ourselves out there, how much interest do we have to stay in there? Stay in the game. That's absolutely right. I just was going to just one point to what Candace is talking about and everybody else. Um, Yeah, I'm just, I feel you're. I feel you, you know, I definitely feel you when you're talking about like you were looking around, you needed a partner, you needed somebody because you were ready, you were ready. And that attitude of can't stop, won't stop, there that that tenacity, that's amazing. And that's how you become who you've become today, which is amazing. But there's a lot of other women they they were like, oh, I want to go. Oh no, oh I want. And then the second time around, they're like, well, this is not for me, and they just died out. So I think the what we're all saying is that we need to all, when we see somebody trying to do something, encourage them and try to help them find a place where they can thrive and you know perform or yeah. social dance or whatever that might be. One thing that I wanted to say um, off of what Candace was talking about is um, yes, it might not be the right fit for the fire, all of this other stuff, but. Another thing that we kind of haven't touched, well, we did a little bit, is the the featureism. So it's like you mm-hmm. might have a really beautiful chocolate girl. She's so chocolate, but she got Pocahontas hair and she got a thin waist. And that's maybe like the image that they will go with versus the strong black woman with big bones and, you know, uh, 4C hair. You know what I'm saying? So it's uh, that has a... That's another thing. Okay, I hear you. But my question then comes to, why does it feel like a black girl has to be twice as good and sometimes a girl that's lighter doesn't have to be as good, but the black girl has to prove herself twice as much to be that man's partner on the stage? I don't know if anyone else feels that way. I've I've seen it. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's just true. Yeah, that's true. And I look at the performance, I'm like, what what is she doing up there? I've seen you dance better on a social dance on a song neither of you knew with some other girl than the show you just did up on that stage. Well, and and one thing I wanted to speak on what Desiree was saying about like that strong black woman um, kind of, and I'm going to say, you know, archetype, but, and this is what I dealt with as well. It's like, I'm going to be an equal partner. I'm going to, I'm going to put my, you know, I want to, I want to create with you, you know, like, let's do this together. And I think a lot of times that stereotype of the docile, oh, whatever you want, what do you think, partner, what should, what should we do? I think a lot of times, and, you know, there was another panel that talked about the fetish, the the fetishness, you all know the right word, um, fetishizing, yeah, of, of the black man. And where it's like, you know, you have someone, a, a woman of another race, that's just like, oh my gosh, I'm just, I'm just in awe of being around you, you know, and then so she's willing to just kind of do whatever. And so, or willing to not be an equal partner in that partnership. So I know that I dealt with that. Yeah. And so I feel like that's off, that's also a mm-hmm. part of it. You know, the stereotype of you're too much. You're too much, girl. So I'd like to go around one time around the panel, so Leah just spoke, and just get everyone's thoughts on this because this is the most prevalent question that has come up. The colorism, the lack of representation on the stage, where does the responsibility lie on that lack of representation? So if you want to take a second and let that sink in, uh, I'll talk a little bit. So did you get those three questions? Did you get those questions? There's a little bit about colorism. A little bit about that lack of representation on the stage for darker hued women or women like featureism, like Desi said, right? That you might be light, but the, you know, all aspects of being black, right? And where does the responsibility lay about seeing that representation? Okay, so take a second. In the meantime, I want to make sure that all of everyone knows that Leah, Carmen, and Stacey Paulin will be having a chat. July 8th, and that'll be on the St. Louis uh, International uh, um, Sal- International Salsa Bachata Festival. 
And so make sure that everybody tunes in there. Um, Leah also, thank you, Rudy. And Leah will also be doing one-on-one -on -one interviews with Edwin Ferreiras. And I think Carmen, you too, right? Carmen as well. Okay. And this is just the beginning of the conversation. So it's going to continue on because for some of you feel like, oh, we have to keep talking about this. We just started. Relax. We've only been doing this a week. Relax. <laughs> Are you going to talk about that again? We just started. Yes. Go ahead, Carmen. We haven't just started this conversation. No. Oh, no. Between ourselves. But now doing yeah. it like this. Yeah, we have. Yeah. But this, this conversation has been going on for a long Oh, yeah. Like this. The like sister. Been, the voices have been there, but they just haven't been listening to. And yeah. And now we've got a platform. I just want to make that point. Make that point oh, yes. That's, that's a yeah. huge point to make. Oh, we've been talking. But now we're, we're letting everyone in on the conversation. You know? So definitely, Carmen, and that's where the pain comes from, that we've been talking about it so much, and now we want to be listened to, and people may not want to, you know, like, oh, again. Okay, so everybody ready for that last question about colorism and representation on the stage and where the responsibility lies? Ooh, that was too much. <laughs> you know what? Um, I mean, what I can say, you know, as I'm thinking, I just think it's, 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 there's, it's everything. Everyone has to chip in, you know, in order for these things to happen. It cannot be only one person. Oh. It can't. And, and I'll stress that it's the instructor. It's it's you as a student doing your research and, you know, the organizer, you know, it just has to keep, you know, just have to keep on going, on going, on going. Because you have to remember, you know, right now, and Carmen, I'm with you on that, you know, these are conversations. This is always an issue. You know, the question is what's happening now. And with the times that we're living right now, at some point, someone hit the reset button, someone is about to hit the reset button, or someone is on their way to hit the reset button. So now that we connected, what are we going to do now going forward? We have to, the fight, the fight is still going to be there. So if we think the fight stops right now, you know, so it's like, it's, we just have to keep, we just have to keep on going. We just have to keep on doing. We still have to have these conversations. It, it, we just cannot stop. If you notice, and you know, tell me if it's me, like, First of all, the protesting and the voices is different. I've been protesting from, let me see, my first protest, I was, I was like young, I don't remember. Now, within a span of time, there have been some, you know, differences that's been made. And mind you, this was ongoing struggles for years. So now what I'm afraid of is we don't want to lose that momentum. Now, the way it was the first week is not the way it is now. If you guys understand what I'm saying, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we cannot lose that momentum. It's very, very important. And honestly, that's what I'm scared for. You know, is it that I don't want it to be, okay, um, we we did this, we addressed it. Okay, now everybody, da, 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 da. no. How do we keep that going forward? How do we keep that? It doesn't just stop as soon as, okay, here's the problem. Okay, I solved it. All right, it's done. Let's move on. Okay, yeah, we're going to move on. But we're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep it like that. We're gonna keep those conversations going. So I think that's that's really, really, really important. And again, to your question, I think everyone has to contribute to that to that change. Yes. Okay, Desi. Any final thoughts on just this? You know, how can the Afro Latin dance industry be equitable and ethical when it comes to questions of race, especially for Black women? Right. We want them to be ethical, right? Do the right thing. It's not a law. Just do the right thing. And how can we be equitable? How do we get up on that stage? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes, we absolutely need to be on the stage. Our voices need to be heard um, because our, our voices are different and uh, our our point of view is different and um, there needs to be not only, uh, a, there needs to be a wide spectrum of diversity on the stage being presented to the world so other people can come into the scene and say, hey, look, this person's doing this. This person looks like me. This person um, has the, the same kind of like judge that I have. I want to do that. And then more and more people can come into the scene. So with more representation comes uh, more dancers. Um, okay. I just want to shout out to Mr. Sordo 
in DC. I was about to talk about him. Or um, just uh, exposing the youth. Yeah, we have him. Exactly, Mm -hmm. yes. Because, you know, it does start early. And when you know that there are opportunities, you can seek those opportunities. And hopefully the people in position of authority are giving those opportunities out, you know? Um, So it, it, it just is like, teachers, let all your kids know what the opportunities are. Uh, organizers give opportunities to people of color, black women, black men um, of all shades, especially the dark skin, black women, black men. Um, and then uh, what else? Uh, mm-hmm. Artistic directors, um, fellow dancers. If you see somebody, maybe they need, uh, they don't have the money to continue training. Maybe you do some you know, come to the house on a Friday, we have a drink and we, you know, learn a step or something, you know, uh, that's what, that's what I can do. I don't have a festival. Um, I'm willing to hear whatever, but anybody needs me for something. If you need me for a word for a step, listen, I'm here to help, to listen, to help and to do what I can. Okay. All right. Thank you, Desi. Candice, you're on the hot seat. (laughs) So I think um, encouragement will probably be one of the best things, like Erica was saying, like empowering everybody um, to stay in it. And just little compliments here and there, they go a long way. Like Erica was saying, when Desi crawled her name in the show, like she still remembers to to this day. I have moments like that throughout my whole little short career of just people saying, hey, that was really good. I liked what you did there. Or that was just empowering like anybody and everybody, even if like you see somebody and, you know, they're standing on the wall, it's just like, Hey, your outfit is, you know, slamming is, you know, really nice. I might be encouraging to them like, Oh, okay. These people at this social were really nice. I think I'm going to come back. I'm going to keep coming. I'm going to help enjoy myself. That way we can start, like I said, seeing more of us. We have to keep encouraging us and we can't just assume that, they're going to be okay. Cause I think that's the biggest thing that, you know, we do just as society in general, we just assume that, Oh, they're okay. Or I don't have to say that because they already know when in hindsight they might, or they might not, but just the fact that you're saying something to them can give that, give them that extra boost. They give them that extra confidence, give them that one thing they need to say, okay, I'm going to keep pushing. You never know. It's like, this is going to be my last social because nobody's coming up to me or I'm not getting asked to dance. And then you go and give them that encouragement. Then they decide to stick with it. And then now there's this whole journey, you know? So just yes. empowering and encouraging. Okay. Thank you, Candace. Miss Carmen Gwynn. Yeah. Um, same, same thing. It, it is a part, like Erica was saying, it's, it's all of our, all of our duty to make sure that everyone is inclusive. Um, one of the things that, um, I could say from just a social standpoint, as far as dancing, you know, all usually everyone travels in packs or they have their, their cliques or their group, but be that person that says, Hey, you know what? That person over there actually is a great dancer. Why don't you ch- tell someone in the cl- clique to go dance with that person over there or, or, and vice versa um, between the, the cliques and the groups of people. And then it goes also for those who know uh, directors and promoters of events if you know that person, say, hey, you know what? I know an amazing instructor. You may want to check them out. They're, mm-hmm. really, they're, one, they're someone that you may not have seen, but they're great at what they do. So do that or, or, or someone who's a performer or an artist. I, they, they, they know what they're doing. They're, they're, good, they're good stuff. So have conversations like that. We, we, know how to, we know how to talk and gossip through things. So let that be part of the gossip. Let that be part of the, the, the movement to encourage and to uplift uh, everyone. Yeah. Know who everyone is. Excellent. Thank you, Carmen. And, and Leah, you said you wanted to add one something. Yeah, I just wanted to add one one last piece is that I know what I can help, um, especially, well, women in general, but Black women and what we've all kind of touched upon is finding your own reason and reconnecting with like your own agency in this space. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, we can put the onus on other people to continue to affirm us and continue to validate Mm -hmm. us. But 
And also, I know that that was a huge part of, of, of my stumbling blocks. It was waiting for someone else to validate me, waiting for someone else to affirm that I, I deserve to be in this space. And so there were, there were times when I didn't speak up for myself and I should have spoken up for myself. And so being able to get in touch with your own reasons and connect with that self-confidence within yourself as early and as soon as possible, especially in a dance world like this, will make all the difference in you being able to say, you know what, this is not right and I wanna be in this space. Or you know what, I, need, I wanna you know, do this, so let me continue to be able to you know, seek out opportunities to do that. So there has to be this kind of you know, personal responsibility and then yes. community responsibility that happens. Exactly. Thank you. And, and speaking to that, um, Mr. Mr. Sorto's group out in, um, sorry, I'm stumbling just because I was, I'm a little overwhelmed. Um, somebody, I'll, I'm just going to go to the comments and I'll go back. Just leave that up for me, please, Rudy. And somebody said, why can't a black woman be soft and beautiful, right? I think we need to stop leading. This is a comment that came in. Then we need to stop leading with the strong black and start saying black women are soft and beautiful as well. Um, we, we're a representation of every type of black woman on this panel. I mean, Candace is soft and beautiful, you know? And Carmen, I mean, she's just sat there very stoically. And, you know, I'm kind of afraid after this, I'm going to get the dressing down. And we're like, okay, I'm going to go into Carmen with my report card. And did I do okay, Carmen? You know? As, and so we're all very different. What we have is integrity, right? So don't mistake um, with a black, ang angry black woman, angry Latino black woman. No, we have an integrity and we believe what we what we're talking about. We have a passion for this community, for the dance community, but we're not all, we're not a monolith as black women. We're all very different. And the last thing I wanna wrap up with before we go into their say their names um, is that representation is important. And I'll go back to it. Those little children that are dancing on Mr. Sorto's class, I don't want those little boys looking at videos right now and every black man he sees for the most part is dancing with a white woman because those are the videos that they're looking at and it becomes part of the subconscious like that one drop rule that we started our conversation about that people don't even really know about it that it was actual law so now these little boys that are eight nine ten years old are looking at these videos and it becomes in their subconscious if i want to be a star I have to get a light skinned woman or I have to, I cannot dance with a black, with a darker skewed woman. Their little partner that they've been dancing with all this time, now they hit puberty, suddenly she's off right to the side a bit and they're choosing others. Because now, you know, when they want that career, it's been subconsciously embedded in their minds that to have a career, I need to have a partner that looks like this. And that's why representation is important. It's not important to me right now. I get it, right? It's about our children that are growing up in this scene. Our children, your son, Philly, your son, Theo, right? And what are they seeing? And then again, no matter how hard we try to break this cycle, it won't break. So yes, I'm going to hold people accountable. Yes, that's for me. And I want to see that change on this stage. Have two partners, rotate, no problem with that. Love who you want to love. I'm not telling you who to be your spouse, who to be your wife, who to have babies with. But if you're up there dancing a traditional dance, you better know who you bring up on this stage with you. Mic drop. <laughs> um, up on the website, kippdc.org. That's Mr. Sorto's group. We would really encourage you to go there, donate a bit to his group. You know, right now, poor kids are all on remote learning. I'm a teacher. They've got teachers like me online all day. They're so tired of me. <laughs> but, you know, this is a really difficult time we're going through with the pandemic you know, with coronavirus, with quarantine, with social justice, with reform. Uh, the fact that even as George, as we're waiting for George Floyd's case to be heard in March and they're fighting about a venue, we're just learning about other men that were killed, right? The fact that going home from a social, we got pulled over by, I got pulled over by the police with my friend who was, you know, F, um, dark black, right? Very dark, cute. And we were scared. We were scared, Right. And when we got when he got me home, we just parked and we sat there for a good while. Yes? Because that's we're in we're in a we're in a bubble 
and we want to we want to protect this community that we have but we want it to be fair to every member of the community so i would like for us to close with each of you just saying the name one or two names of black women dancers in the afro latin dancing they don't have to be professional they could just be women who admire and um Whoever's ready, just can start. Um, I can I can start. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. You want to go right? No. <laughs> um, go ahead. Okay. So I'm gonna get. I mean, like, luckily I can name a lot, but I'm gonna start <laughs> with two ladies from New Orleans, um, Jana, uh, and I think it's Jana or Jana, but Jana Blakes and Julie Banks. These women are amazing. They are professional dancers. They both have been dancing probably as long as I have. And they, they used to dance with uh, Liquid Rhythms at some point. I think, I think Julie still does. People should know who they are because they're amazing dancers. And if you don't know who they are, you should look them up. Thank you. Just, just pick it up when you're ready. Um, two dancers that I'm just like, they are just so beautiful. Um, that one of them, when I was coming into the scene, she was, she was doing it. She was in the company, Amber Rawls from Philadelphia, um, part of algorithm studios. I think she's teaching there now. Um, bomb dancer and uh, beautiful person. And also, um, Rose, um, to, Taruka, I think her last name is. Uh, she dances with uh, Mark Brewer. She's phenomenal. Um, just, I mean, and there's there's a lot more, but those are two that, um, I'm, yeah, need to be in people's mouths. Yes, yes. Okay, I want to call on you like school, Candace. <laughs> no, I was looking for the mute button. Um, <laughs> So, Stacey Paulin, wonderful dancer. She's so talented as a human being, has so many talents and um, mm. just professional and can do so much. And the way that she moves her body, I really admire. And I'm just honored to be able to actually dance with her and train with her. And uh, several of the women on Latin Rhythms down in Chicago, like we have several Black women on that team that just kill it every time they go on stage. And I just admire everything they do. So shout out to Latin Rhythms on that. Yeah. Cool. Erica? I would say two, two Black women I would love, love, love to see, you know, more of um, Maisha Morris. <gasps> okay. She, um, man, her energy. Oh, like just, just, I feel her, you know, like even... You know, when she did a number with Eddie, just her energy and just, you know, just I would love to see Maisha Morris definitely more. And I will say um, Kimberly Charles, uh, you know, a fellow Haitian, a fellow Haitian girl. I would love, love, love. And I know, you know, um, as far as, you know, Kimberly, I know she's out there. So just seeing her keep going, Kimberly, keep going, keep going, girl. So those are the two that I would say. Yay. And Carmen. So the one or well, two that I have, um, Janine Bolden, who's who's one of the girl ladies from uh, Latin Rhythms out of Chicago. Um, Janine trained in St. Louis with me for several years, and then she when she moved back to Chicago, she took Latin Rhythms by storm. And I was it was just amazing to see her do her thing on stage and rock it like no other. Um, and then the other young lady is Fallon Coleman, who is out of Indiana. Fallon owns her own dance company and she is making, she is such a trailblazer for the women that are up there from all hues of color and shapes. And it is, it is just an amazing thing to see her do her thing up there. Amen. Thank you. Let's give it a round of applause. Real applause. So of course I've got a shout out. Jesenia Celia, Desiree Godsell, Candice Joyner, Erica Figno. Leah Patterson, Carmen Quinn. I am beyond humbled that you trusted me, even after our interviews on the phone, that you still trusted me. <laughs> that I just hope this is the beginning of many, many more conversations to be had. And then starting to build from there, right? Because the first the conversations need to be had. And then we see what we're going, what we can build. But the fact, like Cesenia said, 
This is our dance, right? This is our roots. Salsa is a black dance. Mambo is an African dance. And that's what binds us together. And we're not displacing anyone. We're just taking our place. So with that said, thank you ladies so much. This will be streaming again and it'll be available. If anyone has any other closing words they'd like to say, we have, we are under three hours. <laughs> I mean, again, I just want to say, you know, thank you, Rosie, you know, um, you know, for doing this and, you know, thank you ladies. I mean, if you only know how I feel right now, just sharing this, you know, with you guys, that experience, you know, um, Desiree, I would love for us to reconnect. Candice, Carmen, Leah, I would love to learn so much more about you guys. You know, even some of the dancers that you mentioned, send me their names. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like to, I like to learn, you know, I, I love to be educated. So you know it's it's you know like again i mean this is wonderful and thank you thank you again thank, thank you everybody, everybody. Thank you. i want to yeah, thank rudy who's been here oh, go ahead leah did you have what did you have to say something did you want to say something else okay. i, I, I want to thank okay i want to thank rudy lopez who actually spent like a few hours with me, just getting this together, giving us the platform, you know? I mean, if I said, what button should I press one more time? I think it was gonna fly here from Florida. Does it go this button? So I am gonna bring him on the screen because I do wanna speak about a member of our salsa community that passed away. And are you are you in there with us, Rudy? Mm -hmm. Oh man, a <laughs> man, a man. Oh, <laughs> this is the deal. And anybody that stays on, stays on. Lady, any of you have to leave, you can leave. But Rudy is an ally. He makes mistakes. Like, I made a ton of mistakes in this talk. But Rudy did not have to do this. He's not getting a nickel or a dime from this. He may say things sometimes, but. If you jump on one word and you don't see the whole man, you're doing yourself a disservice. This br this brother is as real as it gets. Real doesn't always sound cute. And real isn't always going to be politically correct. But if you take the time and you go in and you say, listen, you said X, Y, Z. Talk to me about it. What did you mean? You find that you learn a lot because a lot of what I was saying was what Rudy has said. It didn't come from me. It came from Rudy. I'm not, you know, just so you know, a lot of it came from my conversations with Rudy because if we don't start listening to other people and what they think, we're only ever gonna talk to like-minded people. And then what are you gonna learn? Nothing. Sorry, I answered my own question, but <laughs> nothing. So I just wanna give that big props. Rudy, you got anything to say? It's Thank you guys. You guys were amazing. That's it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Rudy, okay. Rudy touched you. Huh? <laughs> Rudy touched me. Yes. But you know, but he didn't mean it. Oh my gosh. Maybe that was not <laughs> you know. All right, everybody. A big please. We'll just, just thank you, Rudy, again. Um, for the Beltran family who has just suffered such a big loss. If there was any representation. Um, if there was any representation of the inclusivity of the salsa community and the embodiment of the inclusivity, it was David Beltran. He was large and proud and brown and just, you know, you never knew what you were going to get with him. You could get a tango or you could come out in a weave carried by 12 of his dancers. <laughs> and every time he got that same reaction, everybody loved him. Yes? So in, I would like to dedicate this Black Women Speak, which he would have been so proud of. I would like to dedicate it to David. He was not a friend. It was somebody that I met. He was an acquaintance. But even as an acquaintance, he touched my life. He showed me the possibility of what you can be as a dancer because he was the lightest guy on his feet that I have ever seen, bar none. So with that said, my prayers, 
for David's family. If I hear of anything, of any fundraising or anything that needs to be done for the family, I will definitely be posting on my page and I, I'm sure all of us will. Okay. So thank you, ladies. Thank Blessings you. to everyone. Thank you. Blessings to all of your families watching <laughs> us and hasta la próxima. Black women speak. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Black women speak. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you.